Yo, what is going down, y'all? Welcome in the most underrated podcast. I am Thomas the Franchise, sitting across from me, the homie Dow Palantonio, the homie JJ, sitting here at the end of the table. We are absolutely jammed today, man. So many topics. We're actually introducing um, some sound bites, some sound bites into the podcast. We're constantly trying to update uh, or up the quality for you guys. So we got some good sound bites to play for you, some reaction to those. Uh, I kind of got to do a little bootleg today because of the cord I thought I had that I was going to be able to plug into the mixer. I don't have, so... Uh, but we got a ton of stuff to talk about, including the YouTube comments. Shit, I forgot to put that on the rundown. Ooh. I need to I need to fit that in somewhere. Can't forget that. Can't forget the YouTube comments. Dow, how are you doing? Fuck how you're doing. Why did I pick you up from a Honda <laughs> Civic today? I swear this is like Russian roulette with cars with you. Yeah. Every day. So Dallas Park's over here by the shop. But um, we have over like 30 artists here at the shop. So the parking lot gets packed. So Dow Park's a little bit down the block in the neighborhood. So every day I come and pick him up. I just stop by, swoop him. He jumps in my whip. We drive over here to the shop. Park. Everything's cool. The past couple weeks, every time I pick you up, it's a different car. It's it's your car sometimes. Sometimes it's a 4Runner. Sometimes it's a Subaru wagon. Yeah. Sometimes today it's a little Honda Civic, like a little, uh, just a little Rice Rocket beater joint. Oh, like, that's the worst. Is it a stick too? Uh, no, it's it's oh, yeah, it's automatic it like, transmission. It looks like a like a kid from college would be driving like a 1992 fucking one of those joints. Yeah, about, about that. Yeah, for sure. So uh, I'm actually having my WRX detailed today, man. I am paying two hundred dollars on a detail. I've never paid that much, but I've never really had like a a professional detail. I've always been responsible for that. Just so, doing your own shit. Yeah, man. So uh, I'm actually paying t- uh, this company 200 bucks, man, to detail it. It's a homie, and uh, it's their rental car they supplied for me today. So uh, super beater, no power, fucking mom, moms are us. That's that's what I'm driving today. Hold up, so real quick. does that Go mean ahead. you're getting a new car now? Or? Uh, eventually, yeah. Still, still aiming for that forerunner. So why are you spending two hundred dollars to detail your car when it's gonna start snowing? It's a great question, man. Uh, Dang! And, and look it, at this guy yeah. trying to come through yeah. with a, a little bit hey. of a blast. It's it's a great question, but, but not you, really but, knowing what's going yeah, on. But if you were a money manager, no, you know, no, or a good one like I am. Basically, man, you do it to maximize your profits here. So I am making this thing look fucking wow, super Dallas is passionate. clean. He's getting loud. I'm making this thing look fucking super clean, dog, so I can maximize the cost uh, of what I can sell this thing for. Yeah, for sure. But why wouldn't you do that until you know what car you're going to buy? It doesn't matter what car I'm going to buy. JJ, I'm have you been following profit. the podcast? Yeah. yeah. Have you been tuning in? Remember when he talked about auto brokers? He laid down a whole bunch of yeah. game about an auto broker yeah. and getting an auto broker. Part of that conversation was so he can take this gonna... car. Listen, this is the problem. You're talking too much and not doing enough listening. If you would have listened, you would understand why he's doing that. Because he he's leasing this Subaru, which is worth a certain amount of money. I don't know the exact figures. Right. He's going to now sell this Subaru, which is worth more than what than what he paid as far as the lease. So he's going to pocket some money. So he needs to sell that, clean that car, sell it. He's going to pocket that money. Once he has that money in the pocket, now he can go put then it down I'm on whatever he wants to buy. to make sure that, to ensure that my, my down payments or whatever in my payment monthly payment is what it needs to be. Right. All I'm Makes just kind of saying is that why... Why would you clean your car and everything when you haven't secured another car yet? Because wouldn't you be out of the car? It doesn't matter about yeah. selling the car. He's selling his car. Yeah. He's got to sell his car before he can buy a new car. So yeah. that has to yeah. take place. You yeah. know what I mean? That means the car has to be yeah. cleaned. It's almost like shoes, man. I don't know, you know why I'm saying all yeah. this like it's my yeah. car, but is it's, it? am I right yeah. on this? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Absolutely. This Spot is what on. I'm understanding from the last yeah. brokerage conversation we had yeah. four or five podcasts. It's ago, making smart decisions, not being in debt. You're You're... Just like the same thing I do with my shoes, right? So when I'm done with the shoe, I sell it, and I don't have to dig back into my checking account, my savings account. Yeah. I have that money free and clear to put down on whatever it is the next venture is. So this $200 is a fucking drop in the bucket, dog. Let me just be honest with you. $200 ain't shit, but that $200 is going to help me secure four to six grand profit when I sell this car. Plus, I mean, I will... I will uh I will attest to that. You're probably, I don't know every single sneakerhead in the world, obviously, right. but man, as far as people I know, you are the absolute best at getting a shoe, wearing it a couple times, seeing what you think, or fucking gauging the hype, or how it's going to resell, or whatever right. it is, and then getting rid of that shoe. You, I, I'm sitting on so many pairs of shoes that I just I just want to get rid of. Not, right. even, not even so many, I shouldn't say so many, but I'm sitting on let's just call it a good 10 or so pairs of shoes that I just don't really wear anymore. Didn't like them as much as I thought I would kind of sick of them. Sure. Uh, didn't really want to cop them. Got them gifted to me. Got them in a trade. Just simple situations like that. I'm sitting on so many fucking pairs. You're helping me. Honestly, you're yeah. helping me sell them because I'm like, dude, I'm so fucking bad. Sometimes I just get so stacked up with shit. Sure. You are so good about, um, 
getting rid of the stuff you don't yeah. want in a quick timely matter. You don't give a fuck. You're like, if I lost 25 bucks, fuck it. Yeah. We, we reviewed the shoe. I wore it. I found out I didn't really like it as much as I thought. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Yeah. I'll just get rid of it. Me, and then I'm sitting on it and as it's steadily dropping in yeah. value and now months, I could have fucking got, down the road. Yeah, could have yeah. got 160 for it. Now I'm getting $82 for it yeah. on GOAT. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's, so uh, I it can is. say you're one of the best people that I know doing that yeah, and you're now you're on. doing with cars yeah it's, you know? it's it's a timely thing it's a timely fashion it's it's moving when when the market's hot or when the market's not right it, and it's not always about making profit but there's there's three or four shoes that you may lose 10 15 dollars but then there's a couple shoes that you know that you're going to secure the bag and make a, a hundred a couple hundred dollars profit so it's moving it's making the right decisions at the right time timing is a huge piece of it but it's just kind of knowing the market as well and with subarus in colorado high performance winter car dude it's just as hot as it would be right now as it would be in the summer. It's a great time to move it. And my mileage says so. And the Dude, it's fucking immaculate. I'm driving all these fucking beater cars right. and realizing how badass my car is based off the care and, and, and love I put into it. It's well, awesome. here's my question for you. We talked about... Um the other, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago or whatever, we were talking about this. You said, I'm going to list it myself and sell it. Have uh-huh. you gone against that? You're no longer going to do that? You're going to, because you said it was about two grand to have your broker do it. Is that yeah. right? Well, not not quite that much, but, uh, you know, so you got two hundred grand, maybe. I'm yeah, sorry. It's, it's a grand. You got okay. it. So about $200 worth of photos. They listed on so many different platforms that I could never list it. So it, it could on, sell right? quick. You got right. it. So, so many more people see it, you know, from, from anywhere from the panhandle of multiple states around us or, you know, within us. Um, there's just so many more options. But here's, why I'm not doing it myself. I'd now be responsible for paying certain amount of taxes on the actual sale of the car. Whereas I, if I have a brokerage do it, they take care of all that. So I think it it just made more sense to have the brokerage do it. So I'm a thousand out. If I would have sold it uh, by myself, I would have been about 2000. So I'm losing a thousand to have the brokerage do it where I would have came 2000 out of my own pocket or out of the own profit. So I'm saving about a thousand dollars that was my decision. That's why I'm going to go that route. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was just checking. Yeah. I know you were you wanted to uh, to do that. Sorry, we kind of got sidetracked with the whole. What? Do you have another question? So, yeah. So because you're, I'm guessing you're detailing it for photos and everything yeah. like that. Will you have to detail it again when you officially sell the car? No, absolutely not. No. It's not going to get that. Yeah. yeah it's, it's not going to get, get that jacked up. So literally, what I'm going to do is, so I, I've got a couple cars that I'm going to be borrowing in the time that I'm. Th- gauging that this is going to sell. I believe I'm going to drop the car off uh, on Friday. So I might even get it there today so they can get it listed before the weekend. Um, so they have the weekend to possibly sell it. Uh, what I'm gauging is I think this will sell within two weeks. No okay? shit. So wow. what I'm going to do is I'm dropping this car off at my broker either today or tomorrow. They're going to list. They're going to take all the photos. They're going to list all the photos. They're going to list the car. We should be good to go. It in theory could be able to be sold this weekend. Now, will it be? I don't think so. Um, so what? So I've got a couple cars that I'm going to be borrowing the next two weeks that I'm going to rotate through uh, because all I have is a Harley <laughs> uh, as a spare, and I'm not going to be fucking cruising that right now. I'll tell you that. Um, so I've got a I've got a situation, but I believe this car to sell within two weeks, um, and then of course I'm going to wait for the right price. I'm going to write for the wait for the right lease package. Uh, then I'm going to pop on that Forerunner and uh, put that money down, get the payments right, credits in line. I think we should be good to go. That's the move. Tight. Sorry, we got kind of sidetracked on there. I did want to open up talking about the Michigan North Ooh. Carolina game last night, um, but you driving fifteen different whips really had me uh, had me kind of curious. Confused, as far as, yeah. What was going on, um, dude? There's a bunch of stuff. Uh, we can kind of get into our weekends and I yeah. guess what we're gonna do here in a little bit. But there's so much stuff going on. I know we're gonna get together, um, but the. The Michigan game last night, that felt like a weekend to me. It felt like a dude. Saturday night, dude. I was so excited. Now, I'm not I'm not going to say it made me feel, um, you know, it fully erased what happened in right. Columbus on Saturday night when uh, my squad got their shit kicked in, you know, and Correct. pushed out of the college football playoff. And I'm not going to say it eliminated all of that pain and hurt, uh, but it definitely helped seeing this Michigan squad 7-0. and uh, I thought for sure, I tweeted that out last night when I was watching the game, I thought it was going to take a couple more months losing um, some of the key players that they had on last season's run to the national championship against Villanova. I thought it would take a little bit of time for them to get um, the new players incorporated to kind of gel a little bit, for John Beeline's team to kind of really get going. I thought they would be good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought they could make another Elite Eight type run this year. I didn't know if it would be Final Four. I didn't know if it would be Finals. But after last night, oh, 
Am, is your boy hyped right now? Yeah. Am I? Am I? Le- I'm leading the charge to the national championship. You know right what? Now. I'm not even the biggest fan of Michigan, Woo! but I am a fan of college basketball. Dude. You kind of bring the heat when it comes to college football, dude. College basketball is back. Michigan is on a revenge tour, dude. Hail! This is on. Hail this is Avengers. a revenge what tour. What happened to calling this shit early? What like, do you mean? What do you you're always shit talking. Early? You're always talking about calling the games way too early because there's so many different games that happen, and like so much could happen. And how long is the season? Football is different than basketball. Basketball, yeah. football. There's so injuries are so much more prevalent. Mm-hmm. No, I'm you talking have, about basketball. What do What do you What are you talking about? Are you trying to allude back to some comments I made about basketball? Because if you are, I don't remember these. What are you saying? Because we're, t- yeah. Go ahead. A while back ago, you were talking about how the Nuggets were great and everything and how we would possibly make it to the playoffs or even go farther than that. Yep. And you were talking about how it's way too early to say shit like that because a lot of crap could happen before that happens. It's, I'm trying to say the same the thing. The Nuggets are also in the Western Conference where a little team called Golden State lies. Okay, yeah. Nuggets are also in the Western Conference where, uh, well, I mean, before the season and the past few years, the Western Conference has dominated. Absolutely. Uh, the East has just been shit. Yeah. So it's two totally different things. Not to mention the NBA. We've talked about this. It's hard to bet NBA. It's hard to predict NBA yeah. until you get to January or February and you can kind of see where teams are. Because right now with the Nuggets, they started off hot. You saw all of a sudden they went into a slump. You know, they started off 6 or 7-0, and oh, then yep. they lost... What? Six it out of six, seven, six, or whatever six, it was, seven, yeah. something like that. So uh, that's the NBA. You're gonna get. You're gonna when a team starts out the season. That's not really who they are. Then they ta- then they taper off a little bit. You go through the holidays. You get your yeah. Christmas game. That's still not who they are. Then all of a sudden you get into January. The newness of the season has worn off. Now you're kind of in the lull. Now you're kind of mid January, but the playoffs are still too far away. Correct. So now you're in a situation where you still you're still trying to. Figure out your team chemistry, and you don't really get to know an, an NBA team until February or March. You know what I mean? You see how they start to come together. That's when teams start to make their runs to the por- to, towards the postseason. Right. Teams start to get excited because they know postseason's around the corner. Right now, it's just too far away. In uh, college basketball, it's really not the same. There's not as many games. Correct. Um, the the uh, it's not as tight at the top. Like I said, in the Western Conference, it was very very tight. There was a lot of really good teams. It's just not like that in college basketball. Plus, did you see? Have you seen the way they're changing up the rankings this year? There's two different ways. I have. They have the AP poll, and then they have the other, um, how they're going to narrow down the March Madness tournament. That is weird. That is super weird. So you had Ohio State last night, which is, this is the Michigan fans' dream. This is everything we love, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, Ohio State's ranked number one in that poll, which is weird. That's crazy to me. Because they're 16 in the AP, the Associated yeah. Press poll, but they're number one in the March Madness um, mm. poll, which that's determined by a bunch of different analytics and kind of complicated shit. Mm. I've tried to read up about, uh, read up on it, and I honestly got confused Still reading about it. it. Yep. But there's a lot of things that... Or take go it into, into account with yeah, that. Yeah, go into determining that. So Ohio State is number one in that ranking, number 16 in the Associated Press. They fall last night at home in Columbus. Mm-hmm. Michigan gets the big win. And it's not only a big win, it's a blowout win. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about, this is a, now I don't think, um, I don't think uh, Villanova's the team we thought they were going to be, or they're not the national championship team that won last year. Right. But still, when we played them earlier this year, blew them the fuck out. 70, 73 to 46. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Exactly. So we're not only beating good teams, yeah. we're blowing out good teams. And we did it again last night to it's, North Carolina. It's the revenge tour. Like I said, yeah. man, this was this was Jordan super cool. Poole is dirty, dude. I'm telling you. That kid you. was special last year, and this year he just looks even more special. I dude. love that guy. Brezdekis, dude. Yeah. This guy <laughs> name, name dude, is terrible to pronounce. The name is t- is horrible. I had to, I had to watch some clips just to make sure that I was on. But this guy looks great, man. He had twenty four points, five rebounds. He was nine for thirteen last night. This guy this guy is the real deal. Okay, I love uh, inside and outside. Michigan has become the place for like the Eastern European or for like yeah. the, the foreign players. You know, Same what I mean, last year with Wagner, right? You had Wagner. You have Nick Stauskas who's you been bet. there. You had a guy named Spike Albrecht from Canada who's oh, been there. Now you're going so way back, yeah. Th- these guys, Michigan finds these guys that are from different states yep. outside the U.S. and it's it's kind of rare. You don't see a lot of other college basketball right. teams with a ton of uh, foreign players like that. You yeah. know, they're they're your big high highly touted recruits out of California, out of Texas, out of New York or the East Coast. They're not foreigners coming from overseas yep. um so pretty pretty cool to to see and i'm just excited about the michigan team overall i know you're not a big fan you're a yeah. ku fan oh dude rock um, chalk all day for which sure i haven't picked up on a ton of uh i haven't watched a ton of ku so far how are they doing how are they looking they're they're looking pretty good actually um i'm 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 trying to find out what their record is but uh 
you know, they've had a lot of people obviously transition to the NBA here uh, recently, which and and they're even having some success in the NBA. Um, you look at uh, you know obviously the the Suns and their acquisition, but. KU, KU's always in it, man. But uh, to see Michigan beat Villanova, who's wreaked havoc, yeah. you know, over years with yep. KU, uh, some of these big wins, man. Shout outs, to, shout outs to Michigan. Those yep. are the ones we should be concerned with. No you doubt. Know, maybe, it, maybe it is a uh, changing of the guards with UNC kind of out, Villanova getting beat. Um, that just opens up the, the the realm for KU, in my opinion. Yeah, and maybe you're right, JJ. Maybe I am so, getting emotional. Maybe I'm well, getting a little too fucking excited. You were talking to me last night about duke and how they're starting to uh four fucking freshmen zion William, or yeah zion yeah. williamson and all the talented freshmen down at duke yeah, exactly uh but those guys that's a team that um you would expect to take a little bit more time to gel especially never being together at all never being in the program but they're shining they did get upset already they did get upset early mm -hmm. so they've already kind of tumbled michigan hasn't had that happen yet i assume it's gonna happen we're not gonna go undefeated you know what i mean we're gonna lose a game probably a game we shouldn't lose on a random you know, Wednesday night, Thursday night, something like that. Um, the game they take too easy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it just happens, dude. I mean, they're still kids at the end of the day. I just really like what I'm seeing out of this team rising up uh, in big moments, in big games. This is what it's going to take to win in tournament time. Can you, um, can you go out there and shine in the brightest light? And that's what Michigan's doing. And that's what it takes to win in March. And that's what matters. Right now, all this shit doesn't really matter. These are all tune-up games. These are all warm-up games. But exactly. early, uh, but as early as it is, I'm impressed with what I see with them playing in big games so far. That's all I'm saying. I'm just a little fucking excited. Okay, right. a little excited. I mean, I'm in I the studio. You, I'm standing man. up in this bitch. I got the Fab Four, Fab uh, Five shorts on. Yeah. Shout out to the homie FBCC. Uh, for hooking me up on these joints. You got the Fab Five shorts. I got the dunk from above, fucking Jordan 4s. I got the uh, Michigan hoodie on. I'm Michiganed out. The only thing is, with these 4s, I love these 4s. The Michigan 12s are actually Michigan, and they go a little better. These are not actually Michigan. They're just right. Michigan colors. Just but uh, actually, you know, they're probably, more, honestly, more Marquette colors than Michigan, but I'll fucking take it. I don't care. Yeah. Uh, they're not really maize. But uh, the yellow, yeah, it's a different yellow. But anyway, the... Michigan 12s, the shoe, I'm very, I love that shoe. Obviously, it's Michigan. I'm just not as much of a fan of 12s as I am with 4s, fours. especially 12s with shorts. Yeah. I don't like it as Looks much. Weird. Yeah, it's just, uh, I have to be in a real mood. Some days I put them on, I'm really feeling it, and some days I put them on, I'm like, eh. Twelve, look down. 12s look a lot better with, with pants. Yeah, just not, not, really, uh, not really feeling them that much. For sure. Um, let's kind of move along there. Nuggets. Did you see the uh, Nuggets-Lakers game the other night? I did, Your boy man. was out there. Yeah, you were actually yep. there, right? I was out there. I saw went, some of your tweets. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun, man. I went there with Ed. The, my homies Ed and Riz, they're actually twins. Now, is uh, this a tradition every year, or is this a what We is get this? together for their birthday, and we do some shit, okay. um, but it's not always Nuggets. Gotcha. But that was cool. I saw... My homie Trev Rich over there. I saw a couple other people nice. at the game that I knew. Actually, I, not a couple. I ran into like probably ten people that I knew at the game. It felt like the whole city came out, dude. It was uh, yeah. that was probably the most packed I've seen the Pepsi Center yeah. ever, dude. That was the most. I mean, it was a sellout. There was not an there was not an open seat. Uh, I went. I went there recently for a concert. I went there for Monday Night Raw, and I don't know. You know how concerts they have the back kind of t tapered off tapered or, uh, off or blocked off, or whatever. whatever. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, maybe those those were equally as busy. It just didn't feel like it because you could see open seats. With this, obviously, from floor to the ceiling, it was full, dude. It was That's packed tight. out. Uh, LeBron and the Lakers brought which Nuggets games have been packed out lately because they're doing so well. Yeah. Um, team's exciting, young team. Coach has them going, and uh, blew the blew blew out the Lakers. I the spread was minus three and a half. I was gonna take the Nuggets when we were in there. I was sitting yeah. in my seat. I was talking to Ed about it, and Ed's like. Oh, I think they blow them out. He's like, I bet you they win like one twenty to ninety nine. I'm like, damn, twenty one point victory. You th really, Ed? He's like, yeah, I think so. This I'm was like, at the half? No, this is at the uh, beginning of the game. Oh, gotcha, We're sitting gotcha, down right okay. before the game. And he's like, yeah, dude, I think they uh, I think they blow him out. 21-point win. I'm like, damn, okay. So I'm over here hesitant to take the minus three and a half, bitching it up, getting scared, getting nervous. Right. And uh, what do I do? I don't bet the game. Nuggets blow him out. I take the L. And uh, just like Mike Malone said after yeah, the game, got to take bet. that L. I don't know if uh, you heard the sound. But I, uh, I do have actually the full – um, full clip. Did you watch the game? I, I did watch the game, and I was wondering because didn't you tweet out at halftime like, "Hey guys, what do you think? Here's the halftime score." Yeah. You know, you oh, know. I, I think it's Snapchat or something, something like that. Yeah, for sure. Or Instagram. Instagram. Yeah, I put it on. I put Dude, it on a you poll. You didn't even make a second half bet. Uh, no, no. Yeah. I st in all in all fairness, we we went up at halftime right after I took that snap. I went and took a piss. 
I uh, saw some fools I knew. They were smoking some weed outside. I took a puff of weed. Gotcha. I, I was drinking. A, you know, I had a couple beers with the hey, fellas. Like, let loose. Yeah, Good it was man. an Uber night. You know Good what man. I mean? Like, um, so I had a lot of fun. It was a it was a good time over there. But no, I didn't make a second half bet either. And sometimes, um, I'm guilty of it. If you bet on sports, you get in a little bit of a zone where you feel like, oh shit, and you want to start betting on everything. You got to start betting right. on everything. Sometimes it's nice to just sit back and enjoy the Relax. game. Just enjoy it. And I only really like to, I told you, I don't really like to bet on my teams or my squad. Sure. Same thing last night. I didn't bet on the Michigan game. Um, I don't even know what the spread was, to be honest. I didn't look it I up. I didn't either. I just, um, I don't know. I don't like, I don't like betting with or for or against my teams or in the same once in a while I'll do it. If I just yeah. feel like I have a clear advantage over Vegas or over the house, sure. I'll, I'll throw down a bet, but <laughs> which isn't very often. Yeah. I mean, Let's be real. and you know where I've been finding a lot of more, a lot more success betting lately is live betting. So yeah. basically if you feel a certain way about a team, like for example, I know this game's going to already be over by the time we uh, get there. But for example, the saints um, Cowboys game tonight, uh -huh. If I if I have if I really feel confident on the Saints, do you know what the spread is in that game? I have no idea. Uh, yeah, minus seven and a half. Okay, so Saints. so if you t if I really feel confident on the Saints plus seven and a half, yeah, I might wait because if well not I'm sorry not if I really feel confident if I like the game but I'm not super confident I might wait for the game to kick off especially if Dallas is going to receive the ball maybe Dallas goes down and scores yeah. right off the bat all of a sudden if you're live betting Those that sprints, line's going to go yeah. down to like three. Three and a half, four, somewhere in that range, four and a half. So it's going to drop down a few points, and now you're going to have a little bit of an advantage over what Vegas initially had the game at. So gotcha. you can go, you can go in and live bet it gotcha. while it's in the first quarter, huh. while it's in the second quarter. So sometimes on games like that, I'll wait a little bit and see if I can get a little bit of an advantage on yeah. the side that I'm lo I'm leaning towards. It's it's not quite an advantage, but there there is some a tendency to be yeah. There's more a little of an advantage yeah. Almost. Well, well, think about this. I Just mean, because the dramatic shift in that spread, especially if a big play happens. Yeah. Well, when the game was early last night. I don't know what the spread was at the beginning of the game, but the Michigan North Carolina game. North Carolina came out banging on them, dude. And Michigan it was close. looked like they were in trouble. Dude, those first, those first, uh, let me say the first four or five minutes, yeah. Michigan was playing catch up. Yeah, and and that's what I'm saying. So they, they, they looked like they were in trouble. When yeah. I looked at the spread, I think it was, um, or the the score was 13-10 or 13-11. Uh, yeah. North Carolina was up. Mm -hmm. and when I looked at the spread at that time, it was down to Michigan minus like two and a half or three. Really? So I think the spread was probably about five to start the game. Sure. It went down to. Like I said, two and a half two or half three at three. that time. So if you would have bet it at the time, you would have gained an advantage over the initial spread. Plus, we all know what happened. Yeah. I mean, that would have been the easiest coverage in the book. Yeah. You know? So, but then there was a point in the fourth quarter where I looked at it again live. And North Carolina started uh, making some threes, man. Right. They what got, did, they what got, was the final? Do you remember the final? The final score? Yeah. Uh, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I just know they blew them the fuck out. 85 for Michigan. Yeah. Something. Was it? But I know, all I know, or the reason I'm asking that is... 84-67. Okay. So in the fourth quarter, I was tempted to take North Carolina plus 17 and a half. They were plus 17 and a half. Oh, wow. And they started making a little bit of a run. Yeah. So I was like, I think Michigan's going to win the game, but I think North Carolina might button it up a little, maybe somewhere within sure. 12, 10, somewhere in there. I don't do it. I'm like, ah, fuck it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to even, yeah. you know, I don't want to be betting against my squad over here and then sure. trying to sweat it out at the end. So I'm yeah. like, fuck it. So I'm like, oh man, these motherfuckers are going to cover at the end. I'm like, damn, I, uh, I was right. My instinct was right. Then Jordan Poole hits that three from the parking lot, mm -hmm. you know, just at the, as the time's expiring, Yep. Uh, not, no, not to be disrespectful or anything. There was just no time on the shot clock. He was deep out, had to throw it up and he hits that deep three, which ended up fucking that spread. Yep. So if I would have taken that bet, I would have lost by my own team at the very end of the game. I would have probably been pissed off. I'd have lost like 20 bucks, 50 bucks, whatever I decided to throw down on it. And my team won. Yep. That's why I don't like to fucking, yeah. that's why I don't try to mess with it. I like to look it up. I like to see what it is. And I like to kind of, hmm. Uh, in my mind, Imagine. just to see, yeah, just just to see Good how it's going to go. But um, I would have, I would have been pissed off. Hell you yeah. know what I mean? I would have been. You got the win, but you lost <laughs> the money. Team, it's like what Jordan Poole, this guy I love, who yeah. I'm ranting about and raving about at the, at the beginning of the show here, hits a hits a dagger three at the end of fucking the spread. parking lot. You know what yeah, I mean? Like totally. I would have been uh, been heated. So if you bet sports out there, that's kind of how I do it. But it's it, it is a fine line, man. And um, there are people that get way too into it and obviously yeah. they become degenerates and go down a, a rabbit hole they shouldn't go down but that's not me man uh, but getting back to the Nuggets Lakers I want to play this Mike Malone sound I'm not sure uh, if you guys heard this on uh, Tuesday night no. after the Nuggets Lakers game this is referring to he's asked a question by a reporter referring to the amount of Lakers fans in attendance at Pepsi Center on Tuesday night 
We don't want any converts. <laughs> we don't want any converts. You're either with us or you're against us. Uh, and we understand when we play these great, hey, LeBron is arguably the best player ever. And uh, when he comes to town and the Lakers, you know, their fans carry it. But uh, as long as their fans go home disappointed, that's all I care about. So the Warrior fans can come in here. The Celtic fans can come in here. Laker fans come in here. But take that L on the way out. <laughs> Ooh, oh, got him. Fire right there. Yeah. That might be one of my all-time favorite uh, Colorado sports yeah. quotes from coaches and there's been some good ones we were kind of talking we're about talking it before about the show yeah um, maybe that's maybe that's a holiday show we just run down some funny ass sound bites yeah. from the world of sports just shit we thought was uh hilarious maybe we do like a fucking top 10 or something um for the holidays just That'd some sports dope. sound bites everything from i'm a man i'm 40, 40. to you <laughs> that's know odd, like yeah. just 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 playoffs i mean there's playoffs. a million a million good ones you know what i mean totally. you uh What's what's the, uh, what's the Denny Green? Who we thought Denny they Green, were. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Denny Green. If you want to crown them, they crown their ass. Yeah. The Bears, the Bears are who we thought they were. Yeah. We let them off the hook. They you are. know that all that shit. Uh, but I love that man, um, I, especially the part right here. Take that L on the way out. Boom. Take that L on the way out. Take that L on the way out. Take that L on the way out. That's for you. We'll take that L on the way out real quick. No, I'm just playing, but uh, I, I just love that. I love that. I love that uh, from the head coach. It's yeah. not something we hear often from a head coach. Totally. I think it gets your team going. I think it shows you stand behind your team. Behind your team. Yeah. I think it shows you stand behind your fan base, and uh, you just let them know. There, is no, there are no easy wins. Denver might be a flyover city. Colorado yeah. might be a flyover state, but when you fly in here, get ready. Because we're lacing them up tight and get ready to take that L take on the way out. Well, Fuck out of here. I love, I love that shit, dude. Yeah. If you're a fan it, of the Denver Nugget, how do you not love that shit? It breeds confidence, If you're a man, fan of some other team and you don't love it, I don't give a fuck. Because I'm worried about my team. You know what I mean? Yeah. I love that shit. I love the passion. Oh, man. I just, uh, Especially for Colorado teams, man, who, you know, haven't got it done uh, in most cases when it comes to playoff victories. I mean, we have the Avs back in the, you know, late 90s, early 2000s. But when we talk about basketball, we talk about the Rockies. We just we just haven't gotten it done. Yep. So that's great to hear, man, with a little passion and some backing. I am invested in my team, and I believe in them. I'm honestly, uh, man, I'm kind of shocked how bad the Lakers have been off the start. I knew it would take some time. I thought it would take a little bit of time to yeah. gel and get going, but man. Well, you've heard the latest reports, right? What people are uh, there? There's 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 sources uh, stating that LeBron is uh, being disobedient to uh, Walton's wants and play calling. As oh, well. his co uh, the so, plays. He's so not yeah, really. So yeah, here we go again. LeBron. Well, yeah. I mean, isn't that LeBron though? Doesn't it's, LeBron? Isn't it's the, that it's the LeBronathon? Isn't that uh, what he's done throughout his whole career? Yeah. I mean. I think so. You see him down there with Pat Riley. He was kind of running just running his own place. Right. You see him, Eric Spolster came in, running his own place. Yeah. Over there, Tyron Lou in Cleveland, running his own stuff. No one was ever really manning LeBron. And if you're LeBron James, how can you feel bad about doing that when you've made eight straight NBA finals? Who's going to tell you anything? The results right. are there. The shit speaks for itself. So people can say what they want to say about LeBron being selfish or LeBron being disobedient, but this isn't new. This is what he's done his whole career. And he was just an eight straight. He's been eight straight NBA Finals. Yeah. I think that's where the combo ends. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I don't think there's really any argument. What are we arguing there? Yeah, and we look at some of these teams. Not not a lot of supporting cast right. that really put him above. Right. You know uh, anything? So it is hard to argue. I agree. I mean, am I? I'm not arguing for or against. I'm not saying yeah. right or wrong. I'm not saying yes or no. I'm not getting into it because of the fact that the facts tell us otherwise. Yeah. And if we can go off facts instead of people's opinion. I'm always going to yeah. do that. Yeah. I'm always going to revert back to facts. And my sentiments are just like, here we go again, not like, oh, God, here we go again. It's more right. like, well, you know, back in the news, what what, what did you expect? Yep, no doubt. But I, I, um, He is who we thought he was. He is who we thought he was, man. He's the king. That's it. He's doing his thing. Do you, uh, man, do you feel like, I, I feel weird even saying this, but do you feel like LeBron's lo lost a step? Is he losing? An, is he losing a little bit? I is he on the? Uh, is he starting to tilt I, on the downslope? Is well, he at that roller coaster? It, you know, the roller coaster yeah. creeps up to the top and it gets to the top and then it slowly edges down. Is that yeah. LeBron? I don't want to say he's on his downward uh, descent. Um, but I will say, has he lost a step? Absolutely, man. Father time is a bitch, and you can't argue that. But I don't think he's there yet. I mean, with with his just his downward fall yet or his descent. We look at Breeze. 
We've been saying this about Drew Brees, 39-year-old Drew Brees for, what, the last four years? Different game, though, different different position. He's not agree. running around like that. Yeah. He's he's able to, and especially with all the help that the NFL Rules Committee has given the offense now, especially quarterbacks QBs. can play longer than ever. Look at Phillip Rivers. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's a guy that probably How would be— How old is that guy, 63? <laughs> Dude, he would probably be on the way out this year yeah. if it wasn't for the new rules changes and yeah. quarterback. If he was still getting slammed the way he uh, did early in his career and getting brutal. dumped and getting landed on by these D linemen, I don't know that he would still be in the game. Yeah. I don't know that he would still be playing. He definitely wouldn't be playing at the level that yeah. he is. I mean, we talked about it going 28 for 29 last weekend, no. lighting it up. You know, so let's get back to the LeBron and the Lakers. So if we look at, at this, I, I, are the Lakers are the Lakers purposely losing? No. Or is there a plan to get one of these top names next year, whether it's Paul George, whether it's, you know, whoever uh, we want to bring over? Um, they're definitely not tanking, though. I don't though. think I they're mean... tanking. They're not doing that. That is that is absolutely not what's happening. But I think there are some, some business wins and some business losses probably happening. But LeBron is definitely losing. You know, he's not LeBron of five years ago. Right. He's definitely not LeBron of 10 years ago. It's no comparison here. What is this? Is this his 15th? 15th year? In the 16. 16. Yeah. You know, um, and you look at anybody else, same draft class, right? Look at Mello. Oh, geez. Where's he at? Dude, they look is, like is completely school, different guys. He's in high school gyms right now, right? Basically. Training. So, yeah. uh, staying ready. I just saw a tweet or a video of him yesterday. Oh, and, saying I'm, I'm ready. I'm out yeah, here. Yeah, he was just doing some fucking drills. No Come big get deal. Me, I'm out here. He doesn't look fast. Doesn't look anything. He's just shooting some baskets. But, anyways. Uh, doesn't look fast. Doesn't, <laughs> doesn't look, look fast. Doesn't he do whatever. He's just fucking <laughs> shooting some baskets, dog. But uh, LeBron is definitely losing some steps, but he's still arguably the greatest player in the world right now. He was last year. He will continue to be. But um, he's losing some steps for sure, and I think it's more a father time. And I bring up the topic because I think it is interesting, yeah. not because I feel that way. Sure. I totally don't. I don't think LeBron's on the downside. Right. I don't think he's taken a step back. I don't think he's lost a step. And the reason I say that now is because I'm going to wait until I see him lose a step in the playoffs. Once I see something yeah. change in the playoffs and in the postseason – that's then a, I'll start talking about that's a different all ball right, game. He just can't turn it on anymore. Totally. But what I'm seeing of LeBron in an early regular season and what I'm expecting to see once they get to the postseason are two totally different yeah. levels. You know what I mean? And until I see him decline in the postseason, I'm just I'm just not gonna sit here and say, Oh, well, they're yeah. starting off shitty. LeBron's done. You yeah. know what I mean? He's kind of he's yeah. taking he lost a step or he's, I don't I don't think I'm not that even gonna all, yeah. go down that road yeah. until I see him uh, I think it's well said stumble stumble in the postseason because that'd probably be me uh Take that L on the way out. <laughs> I'd have to take that L on the way out right. if uh, if I did that. So, gosh, that is one of my favorite. I might be dropping that. Great. I cannot wait until I get the right cord. Yeah. So I got this shit Just wired push in. Button. I know, because right now I got to pick up the iPad and like record it in. It's it's so fucking yeah. ghetto, but. Um, Man, I'm I'm excited. I'm excited for this new dynamic. We got some uh, we got some Baker Mayfield sound. We got Dana White sound. I want to get to later on. Von Miller had some funny sound earlier in the week. So we got some really cool sound bites as we get into these uh, topics and kind of dive through. Also, Stardom Sitems heaters on the way. Sneakers and fashion. If we have time, we'll jump into uh, some underrated news as well. But um, let's kind of go. Let's kind of shift a little bit um, into sneakers and fashion. Let's start with Kawhi Leonard. Yeah, uh, signing with New Balance, dude. Kawhi Leonard. Uh, what did yeah. you think? I, I I know New Balance is trying to get back in the basketball game. I've heard rumblings of this yeah. the past few months, and now they've made their first official deal. Right. But we look at back. I mean, New Balance was in the game essentially when they had somebody by the name of James Worthy. Dog. Oh shit! Like we're we're going a long time ago to be in the basketball realm, you know, with New Balance. So I find this pretty interesting. And let's throw out some let's throw out some numbers here, right? So Kawhi. Jordan brand athlete, still wearing Jordans, um, some Jordan low, I think uh, the 31s, 32s, I don't remember exactly. But For the Raptors, you're saying? Yeah, He absolutely. still is currently? Still currently wearing some Jordans. Or last um, time he was out, I guess. Yeah, last time he was out for sure. So um, Jordan Brand athlete and Jordan Brand ath or Jordan Brand actually went to re-sign him and they offered him twenty two million and I believe it to be a five year deal. Uh, check my facts on that, but uh, it was twenty two million. New Balance is said to offer uh, at least five mil plus on this deal and is this a year contract we don't really know because uh what uh, what uh, Kawhi has said came out yesterday and said it's not official Leonard said at Wednesday morning's media availability me and New Balance haven't announced anything yet he was wearing socks and no sneakers during that session but the ESPN everybody's reporting that he has signed for sure and we're going to see some numbers come out but uh what I'm alluding to is this 22 million dollar contract with Jordan Brand 
may have even been worth more than him going to New Balance. Now, what I would tell you is New Balance does not have a face, whereas Jordan Brand has multiple faces, right, as a brand uh, ambassador. Yeah. So is this Kawhi's way of kind of being alone out there, kind of having his own face for his own brand, essentially, and not being a factor in Jordan Brand, who has so many ambassadors? So is this way, his way of making decent money, decent contract with a, with a decent company? But is this wh- – what are the intentions here? You know, what, what are your feelings on that? These are some things I – some thoughts I had. I mean – I know most of your dads out there are probably excited about it. My dad was jumping up and down, yeah. geeked on the dad shoe revolution. Dad shoe revolution. He's going to be out there hooping and da- no, I don't know if they're I think, I think JJ's pretty pumped, man. I think these are affordable, great Look peas. at that. I mean, I think this is this is time to fucking get, get away from the- JJ, would you cop the New Balance Kawhi PE? No. Why? Because I'm just- You haven't even seen the shoe. You don't even know what the PE looks yeah. like, and you're already saying no. You hype beast. This could be I'm like the best. Hype beast. Yes. You're not, but you're wearing an antisocial social social club hoodie. That we talk Supreme, given... You talk Supreme on this podcast. You're giving us the rundown with Supreme, and you will not go after the Kawhi New Balances when you don't even know what they look like. Yeah. These How could, does that not speak hype beast? These could be Air Mag version twos. They could be fucking sick. <laughs> You know what? I'm just glad your hoodie's not... You can't not... compare those two shoes together. Like, what the fuck? Hey, bless your heart. I'm just glad your hoodie's not fucking shrinkled today. Look at your hoodie. Speaking of that. Woo! You got the claws, as JJ calls the, it. The claws. Claws hoodie. I brought out the claws today. <laughs> yeah, I'm wearing the new uh, Cause Uniqlo Sesame Street collab. Uh, this is the crew neck. This is the black uh, with the white X's. I saw it this morning. Chest. It's way thinner than your traditional It is. It's a, it's a crew very neck. thin crew neck, which is really nice, which I really like. So if you're looking for something heavy, meaty, uh, super, super warm, this isn't it. Uh, this is a very good fall uh, crew neck. Uh, but your deep winter, this is not the one. But it's perfect to wear a shirt under, though. Like it is. A, yeah. it is. Scoop neck. Yeah, yeah, totally. So, yeah. So I think uh, I was talking to JJ about this, you know, the young – the young mentality trying to give him a little, little bit yeah. of that. So he was like, "Oh yeah, dog, you need you need that long T underneath it, and you'd be hyped to shit." Like so the I drop mean, him, yeah, yeah just exactly. like the drop him or whatever it is. So I think that'd be super hyped. But JJ's they, putting you up on some style tips, definitely, man. Yeah, just because no. he can't afford it doesn't yeah. mean he doesn't know doesn't what's mean good. He is not connected. JJ, he's that's he's what connected. I'm saying. That's why I'm not insulting you yeah. when I say hype beast. I'm saying you're in the fucking game. He's you're wearing that the hype age. hoodie. You know yeah. the fucking shit. You're that age, yeah. and you wouldn't buy Kawhi Leonard sneakers without seeing them. And he worked at a boutique, a local boutique. For a while. If that's not high beast, I don't know what is. Okay. Yeah, that's true. To be honest, I grew up. Be honest wearing... with me. Always be honest. Oh hey, give... I hate how you just <laughs> hey, play on hey, my fucking words give, like that. Give him give him the Dow Palantonio. Just... Here's the deal. I haven't said it in a long time. Give me the deal. <laughs> be honest. I grew up wearing new balances and everything. And I've just tried to push myself away from that okay. shit. Alright. Because I I I didn't get, get into the yeah. I didn't get into the sneaker game till very late, so yeah. I didn't know they made New Balances. I don't that think were you're very late. You're 20 years old. Yeah. I mean, I got in the game at my senior year of high school. That's only oh, a few really? years before okay. you. Well, I guess maybe it may be late to today. Comparatively to the right? kids today, right. who are the like internet. fucking 10 right. years old and the, they have brand new Jordans on, right. and shit mm-hmm. like that. The internet has made it a lot easier to get True. in the game a lot younger. It's made uh, the information more readily available back in the day it was so much harder to get info yeah. it was so much harder i mean you had to know somebody on the inside that was really it if you didn't know somebody on the inside of a store yeah and to be honest the internet like first finding out about sneakers and everything new balances really don't like rise to the top unless you actually go to a consignment store that actually has them like i've seen them I've, uh, I used to fuck with New Balance is tough before uh, Ultra Boost, me too. to be honest with you. Yeah. The only reason I don't need more is because I feel like they're too similar of a silhouette. Like, if I'm going to wear a running shoe, yeah. I might as well wear the one that I feel like is more comfortable. Right. I don't need to wear a running shoe that's not as comfortable as this running shoe. You know what I mean? Like, plus, I just don't. Plus, New Balances are a little thick. Like, the silhouette is a little, like, chunky, a little yeah. fat and for me, which is great right now because dad shoes, I get yeah. it, but I'd rather wear a less chunky. Yeah. That's the other problem to that shit. I remember growing up seeing my dad wear fucking New Balances, mowing the lawn and everything, and I just can't mm, get that no. out of my head. It's like, I'm too right. young for that shit. All right. Yet. All right. <laughs> that's fair. That's Makes fair. a little more sense. Hey, hey. Sensei. Thanks for coming back with some opinion, yeah, letting yeah, us know. Of course. That I think makes that's a little valid. more sense. If, you, if you're a kid that was only pushed New Balances, your parents pushed you into them shits, you hated them, or like uh, you I didn't wasn't like pushed them. into them. It was just, I don't know. Like, comparatively, if I knew the shit kids knew now, right. 
I would have thrown those shoes to the curb, right? Like instantly. But so now that you're a grown man, you feel like hey, I don't want I don't want these New Balances anymore, Dad. Yep. Get these away. Get these out yeah. of here. You put them on your feet. But I right. will. I will say I. I will give them props. They look pretty dope here and there because they have done some very stylish colors. Yeah. But some of the New Balance. Yeah. 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 For sure. Because I, I know uh, Kith is gonna do one. In the recent yeah. next month or so, or something like that. But yeah, I've heard that. And then Kith has always been really heavy with the Asics He's, back in the day. Yeah, he you know. started with that. Yeah. He had like. Sock knees. I wore sock knees. Th- these were all shoes. Diodoras. These were all shoes that I wore before Ultra Boost. But now you have an Ultra the, Boost. Now you have Boost, which yeah. is so comfy. Arguably the most com- the, the staple of what everybody compares anything to uh, when it comes to comfort. I don't want to wear those chunky shits anymore. Yeah, I have to. But I will have to say, you have to give props to New Balance. Because those were the shoes that started out the shoe sure. game. Like, sure. honestly, though. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Some of those models, yeah, the 800 series, the 600 series, whatever it is. Yeah, sure, I agree. I mean, here's the thing. Would I, I would, I'm not in this position, but I would never leave Jordan brand uh, for, <laughs> Yeah. I just would, I would, yeah. I probably wouldn't leave him for anything. I don't know. I mean, maybe it's hard to sit here and say that because... Maybe I'd have, you know, obviously I'd have more money. I'd have a different mindset. Maybe I'd want more creative control that we know Nike doesn't really offer. Yeah. They don't offer a ton of creative control uh, Creative control a lot of times when they offer people shoe deals. Peas or yeah, whatever. it's kind of just, uh, we've talked about that. We talked about that with the Complex interview with John Mayer. Normally it's just color schemes. They yeah. allow you to change the colors. Yeah. They don't allow you to create your own silhouette or anything like that. Right. So Your own shapes. Right, yep. As, Joe, as Jerry Lorenzo would say. Yeah. So it's hard. I mean, I know the internet was flaming quiet. I don't know if you saw on Twitter. Oh, I mean, dude, they were, they were so They were killing much. him yeah. on, um, on Twitter, which, whatever. I just, I don't think I personally would ever leave Jordan Brand. I'm also yeah. not in that position. So yeah. um, it's hard for me to say, but I think it's, I think it's dope. I think it's, uh, I'm excited to see what comes of it. For sure. And, and, I'm, I, and this is a way, again, to separate himself from anybody else on Jordan Brand. This is, this is a way for him to, like, he, would, he is arguably going to be the only face of New Balance. Yeah. And if they do something cool and if the tech is good and if it plays well, good for him, man. He's separating himself. He's still making his money and he is legitimately the only face. Yeah, I get it. Nope, totally. Um, before we fully move into sneakers, man, I just want to uh, touch on um, the Lakers stuff before because I'd spoke on this on another podcast before, and I talked about uh, I talked about the dynamic between Lonzo Ball and Ra- mm-hmm. Rajon Rondo and yeah. how it was affecting LeBron and all that stuff. Dude, I was wrong. I, I said they need to trade Lo- uh, Rondo. They yeah. need to get Rondo out of there. Lonzo looks uncomfortable. Lonzo's not comfortable with his touches. Well, now Rondo's out of there. He's been injured. He's yeah. been hurt. They've been shitting the bed. Without uh, Rajon Rondo, dude. Yeah. Just plain and simple. I was completely wrong. If I would have, uh, if they would trade away Rondo, this is what we're seeing. Yeah. I mean, Lonzo's not stepping up, which I said he's not going to do. He's not a star player. Sure. He's not going to ever be a big time player. He's going to be a nice role player on whatever team he ends up on. He's just going to have a nice role playing career. That's what Lonzo Ball is going to be. Yeah. Um, and I said that I thought he could control that. I thought he could control his position without. Rondo being there, and You're I'm wrong. totally wrong. We're they, finding they out need, that it's they wrong. They need Rondo. Yeah. Um, I don't even know what the numbers are, but I know that if you compare the games where Rondo was there versus the games where Rondo's not been there, um, Lakers have been on a skid without Rondo. Right. So I just want to make sure that I, for the people in the comments that like to uh, hang on every word, I just want to make sure that I'm clear about that. Uh, I was definitely not on base when it comes to that. I just... I'm disappointed in Lonzo Ball. I fi- I figured he'd be able to pick it up. I think he I thought he'd be able to right. kind of carry that weight and he just hasn't been able to do that. And so. Rondo went out with a broken hand? Yeah, finger like a finger or hand something like that. Gotcha. Some okay. kind of injury on the hand, so So just, but that's so that's at least a 5 to 6 week injury, yep. I think. Um and it could be longer, but uh yeah. Okay. Yep. They they're uh, they're definitely struggling. Like I said, I don't I don't have the numbers, but I know I know they're struggling without them. Gotcha. Um, but let's move into sneakers and fashion. What uh, what do we want to go into this week as far as releases? Anything you're looking forward to? Yeah. Oh, oh well, actually, let's start with the Supreme drop this yeah, morning. Yeah, for sure. We were sitting here. 903 hits. JJ's like, oh guys, the Supreme drop. You were like, oh fuck, I want to get the mirror. You're yeah. digging out your credit card. I'm like, oh my god, it's 903. You're fucked. I'm, Dallas. Fucked, yeah. I'm getting uh research stuff ready for the podcast. I don't give a shit. I'm not gonna pay 498 for the jacket. Right. Um, even though I would like to have that jacket, I'm just not in the position right now to pay five hundred dollars yeah, for it's it. Still sold out. And it was yeah. sold. Yeah, I figured that'd be sold out quick, quick anyway. Yeah. But you were still able to get the mirror. I was uh, 903, 903 logged 903, on uh, to 904 when the credit card was pressed. You know, because I 
assume all of the jackets, all of the bibs, all that hype shit, everybody was trying to focus on that. Um, but I can, again, I've said it in the past, man. I love accessories. Accessories are my deal. Do I need a fucking mirror? Absolutely not. Will I give it to the lady? Maybe so. Maybe she needs it. Oh but I was God. thinking, I was thinking, you know what, man? When I go to the, when I, I'm growing up my hair. I don't know if you could see, uh, cause you're like, cause you always give me a hard time. You're like, Dallas, what, what are you fucking doing with no your hair? No way. But I'm growing my hair out. Dude, you do 15 different styles a year. Got to, man. Per year, the, he does 15 style changes. It's so insane. One, one Gotta keep it legit. month he'll be. Super long hair, greaser fucking look. Then the next day, he'll still have the long on top, but he's got the side shaved. Then two weeks later, he's got the long cut off, and now it's spiked up on the top. I'm like, what the fuck is going About on that here? life. I, I mean, why? I rocked the same hairstyle for a decade, I just know, shaving man. my head. You know what I mean? Like, it's just been... Just, I've had this same haircut for a year and a half now. Oh. I just like to keep it weird, man. I just like to he keep it weird. He just switches it up. Yeah, he switches sure. it up like I crazy. Bored, dog. And you know what? Here's, here's why. Dude, I have a lot of homies that don't have any hair. Yeah. Well, so, you take advantage. Advantage. Oh, one of them, right? Like, yeah. You know, so like the fact that I have hair and I have nice hair, it's starting to get a little salt and peppery. There's no doubt about yeah. that. But I'm going to rock that shit because I think it's fuck. I earned that shit. So, when you, know you say I mean? I'm growing it long, what do you mean? What do you, how long? I don't what are we know, talking? Man. I was thinking. Talking Wayne's World long I, I was, again? Are I was, you doing Wayne or? Well, and I'm doing it different this time. Are we talking so Axel Rose? I have a natural mullet that grows. <laughs> so, the bottom grows. <laughs> I, I was literally going to ask you <laughs> yeah. if you're going to grow a mullet. Yeah. Oh, my so gosh. So, the, the back grows a little faster than everything else, the sides, the top. So, I'm actually growing it long from top to bottom first. Oh. So, keeping the bottom short. So, growing everything from top out. And I'm going to kind of see what it does. Man, so right now when I go to work, kind of see what it does. See what it does, because I've always rocked mullets back in the day, man. And I I did mohawks for quite some time, dude. I did a mohawk for about five years straight, man, which was pretty sick. So, uh, so yeah. Anyways, getting back to it, I did. I was able to pick up the. I don't know how hyped it was, but I was able to pick up the new hand mirror from Supreme. Yeah, retailed at twenty eight bucks. Uh, so obviously you throw the ten dollars. People really shipping. liked it, but the whole yeah. thing, what you were saying. Once they drop Supreme, or no, once they drop like Gore Tex or North Face, North yeah. Face especially, no one gives a fuck about anything else. Yeah, nobody needs anything else. Nobody needs an accessories, anything like that. So I was able to secure that. I think it's going to be cool. Like I said, man, if the lady wants it, I'm going to have it again. I, I just love accessories to hang out with, with those. I mean, from ashtrays to the Supreme <laughs> bouncy balls, I just love those accessories hanging out. But, uh, you know, maybe I'll take it to my barber the next time I go and, uh, you know, we'll get a fucking hype beast cut. Uh, uh, I'm going to try to get those Supreme You have clip. a specific barber? I do. The person you go to every I time? Do. Girl or guy? Uh, girl. And she knows what's up, huh? She is so fucking tight. That's a, who hooks you up with 15 styles a year, huh? <laughs> wow. She, she's the one. Fantastic Sam. You know what? No, oh. dude. No, this is... This no. Is, no. <laughs> we don't mess with... Hey, nothing against Fantastic Sam's uh, because they suck that bad, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. But, uh, but yeah, no, I. Yeah, you got to go to people that you trust, man, especially when you have nice hair or you have hair to play with, you got hair to mess with. Man, go to somebody you trust. Yeah. Build that rapport, man. And, uh, dude, now I, I don't even say what I want. I say, hey, here's what I was thinking. Here's where I'm at. You've cut my hair for fucking 17, not 17 years, but I would say probably 12 years now. I've had the same person. It all makes sense now. It makes sense why you rock a bunch of different cuts because yeah. if you have someone you trust yeah. and you trust them to kind of just I do your thing. them. You just said, I, just, I don't really... I just kind of go in there and say, hey, I was thinking about yeah. this, and she always does her thing. Yeah. That's why you're rocking 15 different. That makes they know. Just answered my they question. Know, makes they know way where more your calyx are. They it's know, not even you. It's, yeah. it's, it's your half your. It's half you, half your stylist. Yeah. Dude, they That's know. They know where your calyx are. They know where your fucking bad points of the hair is because it always right. happens. Right. Um. And and dude, you give them the power. Does she cut your beard as well? Does she do any beard trimming? You know what? I don't really have that much of a beard. Yeah, you got a great <laughs> hair, but bad beard I game. Got, I just can't grow a beard. It's tough I wish to get both, dude. There's a lot of yeah. cats like that. Like, you either got the recedes like me totally. and you got a nice beard. Like you and Jev, right. for example. Me right? and Jev, yep, yeah, Jev. Or you got the uh, great hair, but the beard is just a little bit. Whack. What? Great hair, but the beard is not that good. Yeah, the beard exactly. Is, JJ's yeah. the same. I got, oh, I thought you were saying yeah, you got I was, both. Yeah, I was like, no, no, no you're no, on the look, I, I was yeah, shit's look, growing in all white trashy many, like Joe Dirt. <laughs> look at how many years I have on JJ, and like it's all there. I mean, there are some weak, weaker points yeah. within it, but it's almost like head hair on my face. There's no, there's not a lot <laughs> right? of, there's not a, yeah, there, it is. There's not a lot of texture to it. There's, you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's so thin. It's like, like down Indian. here. It's like Indian. It, like dude, that's Indian a great way beards, to put it. Yeah. You know? Native uh, American. Yeah. Like it's just, and which I do have in me for mm -hmm. sure. And my dad. it's just super thin. Even the mustache is a little yeah. thin. Um, it grows in, but it's not, and it's a little bit thin down here totally. yeah. where it comes down. Yeah. It's just, it's a little rough, but I know, man. Hey dude, I mean, it's a sacrifice. Like, Trying to rock it though. It's a, sacrifice dude totally. you either have it on your head or you have the beard if you get both 
very, very lucky. Yeah, you're blessed. But we're all just made the way we are, man. Some people, it's yeah. all genetics. Some people get gray hair up top. Some people lose their hair early. Some people go gray early. Some people have uh, dark hair until they're fucking, right. you know, 60s, 70s. I mean, some people have great beards. Some people can't grow a beard at all. Can't grow a mustache. It really just, it's all genetics, man. There's no right or wrong. It's just the, on the it. way we are, dude. Yeah. We're all uh, we're all just different. And you got to embrace the way you are. Like, uh, definitely, I've, I didn't... I don't really care. I just kind of yeah. do my thing. Like I'm not, I'm never like, Oh man, I need to, you know, if I, if I can up my game, if I can get some beard oil, do a little something to make myself look a little nicer. Hell yeah, I will. Sure. But I'm not going to sit here and be like, Oh man, I need to go get plastic surgery and I need yeah, to go no, do no, all no, this no. other yeah. extra shit. You know what I mean? Or go buy these hair pills or go do any of this. I don't, you know, is what it is. Like no big deal for me, man. You bet. So yeah, so with that, with that man, so I've got the the cause on today, uh, which is their most recent collab. Uh, here on the table, oh yeah, let me see this. We have uh, we have a few uh, other things that I, w- I was able to pick up. I did get the T-shirt, just a basic pocket tee. Uh, with all the, this came from online. You we have a store locally, and you chose not to go to the store locally. I'm the, They're I'm probably the no t- sitting at the store too. Could be. So. so you could so you could double up on this stuff. I'm the no time guy. Where I is that online. store? What's the location? Uh, I might go after the show today. Uh, 16th, 16th Street Mall. 16th and something. It's yeah. literally on the clo- It's on the Thanks, side fellas. I'll look the- it up. Yeah. No, no worries, yeah. fellas. Appreciate all your help. 16th Street Mall. Mall's fucking 20 blocks wide. <laughs> Jesus. Or 20 it's blocks closest. Long. It's on the That's fine. very end next I'll- to the Capitol. You you seriously? If you get on the six, if you've never been to Denver, if you get on the 16th Street Mall and you start walking at one end, it'll take you an hour, two right. hours to get all the way to the Absolutely. end. You can't just walk the thing. It's not like a regular mall where you just walk the thing. You got to ride. They have a free shuttle bus that takes yeah. you up and down the mall. Okay, that's over well, exaggeration. Then, I've mean? done it. What do you multiple mean? Multiple times. What do you mean? It takes less than an hour to walk that. You have thing. plenty of time. I don't have yeah. a lot of time. I'm trying to get there and go. I'm yeah. not trying to fucking mosey around. JJ, look was that around, before or after you went to Planet looking Fitness? Looking at the birds. <laughs> I'm not go get a smoothie at Jamba. Like I'm not doing that. You and your friends are doing that. You guys are hanging out down there. You guys are probably panhandling down there. I'm not doing that. I'm I'm a grown man with bills. I got shit to do. Same. Okay, here we go. Oh, You're not JJ. same. Anyway, so, tell yeah. me about the. Uh, so uh, you got the you got the white uh, pocket tee with the double X's, uh, the cause X's on the dope, actual dude. pocket. I like it. Um, I'm not a big fan of white T-shirts. I'm but, not a fan uh, of Sesame Street, and I don't definitely wear Sesame Street clothes. But these don't really have any Sesame Street right clothes, right? Other than the tag. I mean, uh, they I'm do. Sorry, well, logos clothes. <laughs> so let me hold on. Let me take this shirt off, and I'll, well, we can actually see it on this one. Yeah. Yeah. So, let me see. On the back side, you do oh, see some Sesame you. Street references with the actual characters back there. I don't know, dude. No? I don't know. I guess, you know what? To be dead honest, I like the black and white. I like yeah. that it's black and white. I like that it's not all the bright. If it was totally. like that tag. Yeah. Couldn't do it. Just like like the one JJ has. I'm just not feeling it. I'm not yeah. feeling the... It's not, it's not your style. No, nah, it's not. It's man. not your style. It's not. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fat boy. I like it. Guy. Other than the fact that they're made very small and the fact that people keep asking me if the Elmo on my shirt is dead. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Are you, are you, uh, wait, wait, these are, these run really, really small. Yeah, let me, let me give you a little give bit of size. Let me advice. give you some sizing advice on these. So the t-shirts, uh, I would probably go up a size. I did get a medium cause that was all I was able to get before it sold out. So I'll just. I'll make it a gym shirt. I can't go to Planet Fitness if I cut the sleeves off and shit <laughs> with it <laughs> because you of their, could. because their rules and limitations. But uh, no, no, you could make it into um, a stringer and get it get it through there. <laughs> make it into stringer. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> you know what? I had I had some people hit me up saying, "Hey, JJ put me onto some game with the stringer shit." The are they str- into it? Yeah, the stringer. People they, are into they it. They had no idea, but then yeah, as we painted the picture, they knew what it was. Nice. And they were like, oh, that's what it's called. But anyways, aside from that, JJ, we don't want to hear any more about your fucking stringer. <laughs> okay? But uh, I would go a, was, I'd go a full size. So unnecessary. I'm I'd, sorry, JJ. I'd go a full size up on, on any of this clothing at least. So I usually wear mediums in, okay. in hoodies or crewnecks. Uh, definitely go large. And it is still short, but I think that's kind of the hype cut on these. Oh, so see, I'd be aware of that. That's why JJ was talking about wearing the drop hem tee underneath. Yeah. Because you wear the drop hem underneath, the short doesn't matter. And I actually do that with a couple of my crew necks anyway. You've yeah. seen me around here the past couple of weeks as yeah. it started to get cold. Yeah. I'm rocking them like that anyway because they're too fucking short. Yeah. And I know that if uh, I lean down or bend over or I'm working around here. Butt yeah, crack USA. Know, ass is out. And I'm wearing, you know, I'm wearing uh, super thin Sumer boxers, Tommy John boxers, fucking mad thin. You can mm-hmm. see my, you see my butt through the boxers. You know what I mean? Like just rolling around here. So that's the way to go on uh, crew necks is the drop MT underneath, especially on a lot of the newer shit. If you're buying um, probably any hyped or semi hyped shit or even just modern fashion shit, yeah. 
they're going to be shorter. They're which literally is made for little skinny white boys. <laughs> is that what it is? Is that, I, I don't know. I feel like it is. They're just making it's them just, like that? Yeah. They're just for very skinny people, unfortunately. Skinnies. So. So yeah, I like this collab, man. And it's, again, very, very affordable. The shirts, the t-shirts are like 15 bucks. And then I think the crew necks are 29 bucks. Wow, dude. 30 bucks for a crew neck. And and the uh, cause logo's stitched on the front. Yeah. That's pretty sick, too. It's embroidered. I do like the lightweight, man, especially working in here. Some of these fucks around here at the tattoo shop just feel the need to be, have the heat so high. Like super blazing. And I'm like, dude, put on a coat. Like, gotcha. It's just because you're hot doesn't mean everyone in here is hot. You know, put on a coat. So JJ and I are around here working, and it just gets burning up. So that's perfect for a a lightweight situation. You want to wear it around your office. You want to wear – I don't know if you can wear it around your office. I don't know why I said that. (laughs) If you're wearing wearing clothes to it – or if you're uh, working an office job, you're probably wearing dress clothes to the office. You're probably not wearing a cause. It's great great for a lounger. casual Friday. It's great for a lounger at at the house too, man. You know, on these cold nights, you got the fucking – you know, got the furnace on or you got the uh, the little – Whatever your fire pit, whatever, yep. whatever it is, man, great for that. Um, I do have two updates, man, on shoes. Uh, one new and one that was supposed to release the thirtieth that is now pushed back to next year. So, um, if you do, you remember the Adidas ZX yes. four thousand forty? Yep. We all kind of like that, right? Because it's got cool colors. I think this That's is what one. we saw on JC's uh, shit, right? Yeah, for sure. JC kicks. had them yep. early, you know. Uh, but I think this is colorway, color blocking materials, and actually having the new technology of the 40 uh soul i thought no one could get this shoe i don't think anybody can and now so you can't get it this it year up. and guess what you can't get it this year because it just got pushed back it was supposed to come out november 30th it now has been pushed back to even possibly spring of oh next shit year. wow so, a possible spring release what I've do you heard. think the result of that is the 40 soul they having trouble producing that uh might be might be on that i, I feel don't like know. that's the the opposite of what should be happening there. Shouldn't that be the easiest fabrics. thing to produce, the 3D soul? Because you yeah. just have machines fucking pumping Machine, them out? Machines pumping them out. Here's here's the problem. I'm so confused. I don't have the exact answer on okay. that. But okay. what I do want to de- uh, you know, uh, kind of change the conversation to, I think this is a big miss. For that Adidas? Yeah, that they're not releasing this. I think mm. this is one of the most hyped shoes, colorway, and of course having the 4D technology. I think this this could have been Adidas' best release of the year, arguably, mm. based off the color blocking, based off of the hype that I've heard around it. Um, I think this is this arguably is one of the people's uh, favorite silhouettes of the year, and now it just got pushed back. So again, this is Adidas. Not getting their pricing right, which we've talked about. This one retails for three fifty. Yep. Um, we've talked about that as well. But this arguably, with technology, different shoe collab, four uh, D, has everything that people are wanting and needing, and to keep Adidas in the game. And now it's not going to happen this year. Interesting. So wow. now, does that make it more hype for next year? Does that make people want it even more? And there could be some subconscious things to that. But, man, this is a big miss, in my opinion, for Adidas. They should have came out with this this year. It would have been a great shoe, and it could have put them back on the map. This this shoe's tight. Maybe do you feel like um, they think that this year is kind of already over, the reputation is what it is, and they want to use this to start next year with a bunch of hype and really start with a bang? It could be. Is that possible? I would agree is with that. that um, it looks m- like they've went this year, the end of this year with 1.0s. It's, right. it's really a retro fest for them. So it looks, so like. It looks like it could be a situation, uh, a marketing, uh, a marketing decision be. versus a quality. I mean, a quality but, or production decision. But does right? that work out for them? Right. Yeah. That's yeah. that's that's what that's interesting. What I have question. Yeah. yeah. I wish uh, those are the questions I have. I mean, is it? A, I I wonder. I yeah. wonder if it's a marketing decision or is it a quality uh, control decision? Are they just not able to or a production decision? I guess if yeah. you will. Um, interesting, but yeah, it's a big drop in my opinion, man. I, I I was really looking forward to that shoe, and of course, I I wasn't going to get it at retail, so I was I was ready to pan up that six fifty. Uh, that was kind of my max on this shoe, so I was going to spend some good money on this, and uh, I don't know if I even could have got it on resale for that. Probably as hyped as I'm hearing this is, that's probably going to fall around that nine hundred to a thousand, you know, on resale yeah. tip. So, uh, and Maybe that's what most four Ds are doing anyways. You look at the four, Foot Patrol. You look at the Gray Onyx four D that just came out here recently. I think that's about the cheapest or most affordable four D that has come out recently, and that's still about seven fifty. Wow. So um, now a new silhouette, and this just got announced a couple of days ago. What do you know about the Nike or excuse me the Adidas, Adidas original the Night 
jogger. Nothing. Never even seen that shoe. Wow. Those yeah. Look pretty so this cool. was this was draw. This Night was jogger. Let me let me check the. Yeah. So this down. was just announced. I think two days now, three days uh, ago. And what this shoe looks like, it it, ha- it has some Aniki hits to it. So you've kind of got that Aniki mesh. Uh, you've got that uh, suede or nubuck uh, around the toe box, like the Anikis have done in the past. You've got the three stripes. Uh, you have the boost, but it looks like it's full boost, like the Anikis have done throughout uh, back to front. And then you have some pod looking uh, similarities. So you look at the laces. Those are the laces that are used in the PODs. You look at some of the back uh, support. Again, some of the support that the uh, pods have done are the PODs. But you know the PODs do not have full-length boost, right? They have the kind of ship yeah. of boost on yep. the backside yep. and then the regular EVA foam on the front. So you have kind of a mish, uh, kind of a mishmash of those two silhouettes is what that shoe kind of reminds me of. Um, in terms of support stability, it looks like it is a jogger. It looks like it's going to have the support and stability in there uh, more than a Niki for sure. So maybe that is kind of... A jogger and something somebody would run with. But are you going after these? I will. I will get a pair because I've got to try them out. Yeah, I even you got the pods. I, right. I got the. I was the dude with the PODs right. that fucking go for nothing right now. But I had to try them out. Did you I, sell those? I, yeah, I don't have them anymore. <laughs> of course, <laughs> so, wore they, them for two days and got rid of them. They were not good. Clean so, them out. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm going to try them. And dude, I've, I had six pairs of Anikis at one time, and now I just have the two. I have that solar yellow pair, and then I have the neighborhood. Sold so, my solar yellow pair. Did you? Yeah. Did you make good money? A homie Brian out in uh, PA, he just offered me too much. A same dude I got the Off White Vapor Max from. I oh, think yeah. it was the same. Maybe I'm fucking, maybe I'm tripping. I think it was the same you dude. You got both pairs from him. I sold him my Solar Yellows and then I bought both Off White Vapor Max from gotcha. him. Gotcha. Yeah, the white and the black. What size was your uh, a Solar Yellows? 12. Okay. Yep. So it wasn't the 12 and a half unicorn. No. But still 12. Mm. Anything in bigger size, dude. anything over 10 yep. in that colorway? Because I think it was a, U, uh, a European exclusive. Yep. And he just kept hitting me up, dude. He was like, I cannot even, I want to buy a pair. I don't even, I want to pay whatever. And I can't yeah. even find them. Yeah. You, you can't, can't find, find them. sizes. Like, they're not, and above, it's not above that they're 10 expensive. and a half, There's just no sizes. There's no sizes, dude. They're so hard to find. So yeah. I, not that I regret selling them. I would have liked to hold on to them, but. Yeah. The price he offered me, I had no box. My box was fucked from the fire. Oh, the fire, yep. Um, the shoe had gotten a little bit wet, so the suede was a little rough. Oh, was it? He was cool with that. Uh, yeah, it was just like, it wasn't as soft because yeah. you know how when suede gets when it gets wet. It just, it's not yeah. the same. So, that hair hardens yeah, a Yeah, it just bit. hardened a little, a little hair, bit. Yeah. Uh, no James. No James. There you go. Got him. Um, but it, I, uh, so yeah, I sold him to him. Kind of regret it, because, but I still have my Soul Yellow 1.0, so oh, I'm, I'm happy. You know I love what I mean? that I'm story, still, too, yeah. on those shoes. Yeah, you got to keep that shoe forever. I know. Can never Great. get away with that one. But yeah, I'm, I'm happy with it, dude. Gotcha. First impressions? Either they look you. like Packer EQTs to me. Packer they look EQTs. Like, they okay. look like the ones you hate. You oh, had to have three pairs yeah. of, the, for the sure. The good news is they don't have that uh, that secondary <laughs> uh, you, layer you know inside. for sure? It doesn't look like it, so it looks like they have a blue, It'll, yeah, it, a blue layer. But it and it looks. What is that thing coming out from behind the tongue? That piece of blue layer there. Uh, I think that's just the inside of it. I think that's just kind what? of a. It looks a, like an extra little flap there. You don't like you don't. I, I see the flap there, but what I don't see is the extra leather piece that's coming oh, out above you. that. And you you that, have those. You that would was going to dig right into the blisters. So it looked a little bit. Eh. These are not the blister two point <laughs> These are not. Okay. We shall see. We yeah. shall see. So I'm looking forward to that. But um, in terms <clears throat> of that, that's kind of wait, 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 wait. Let me let me uh, one more thing on these. Okay. Did you scroll down on there, and do you see that second picture of the side? Yeah. Why does that look like a, a Nike Epic React material oh, along the side there? The, the shower curtain material. Yeah. Doesn't it? It does a little bit. Is it? But on the first photo up top, it doesn't look like that at all. It does. Yeah. It looks like a hard leather. Yeah. So I'm confused used here yeah i don't know what that is but it does it looks like the kind of the honeycomb yeah. shower curtain yep. uh concept it doesn't look like you can really see through this so you've one. got mesh in the toe but then on yeah. the side where the three stripes are on a on a uh, detailed pick under some better lighting it, yeah. it does look like um the shower curtain material that that's on the and do you uh, see the tongue element 87 you see the tongue the exposed foam a little off-white conceptual mm. thing going on there you see that? Yeah, I do. Is I that do. weird? I didn't on the initial photo. I do now. Um, now we could, cool. we could be looking at a sample. You kinda know, we cool. don't know if this is this is the retail. I'm intrigued. Pair. 140 dollars retail. It's got me intrigued. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, uh, especially at that price point. When has Adidas launched Adidas launched anything that low recently? Right. Yeah. Unless it's been on sale, you haven't seen them drop 140 dollars silhouette. Right. 
You know what I mean? Well, and the thing about this shoe is we're, we're looking at January of 2019 as a release. Yeah. So, again, we could be seeing a sample pair, so that exposed foam on the top of the tongue may not be there. But this, this yeah, the shower knit, that is very, very close to uh, what those elements would bring. Uh, what about some of the Ultra Boosts that are dropping this weekend? It's really weird. They're dropping on Sunday. Yeah. Sunday's the 2nd. Correct. Is that your birthday? No, uh, Sunday is the 2nd, yes. So that is my birthday. Birthday's and then the you second. have nice. the 1st, that's where in the OG uh, Ultra Boost 1.0s come out. So you have the first on the OGs, and then the second where you're going to have the Miami Hurricanes. Did you see those drop early yesterday? Yeah. Uh, Champs. Champs. Is that who it was? I saw Champs. Well, uh, actually, I saw, I'm saw. i sorry. I saw photos on Champs. I don't know oh, if they dropped them. They, uh, yeah, some site dropped them early yesterday. I forget. I apologize. I forget who it was. But, yeah, you're talking the Miami Hurricanes and the Scarlets uh, both drop on the second. And then I think that white 4.0 with the red stripes and the, the gum under the, the Texas desk. The A&M? The gum, no, the gum under the desk oh, bottoms. Oh, the, uh, yeah, it's just called red stripes. Yeah, I think those stripes. drop the fourth. So you've got two on the second, one on the fourth, I believe. Uh, yep, you're right. Yeah, I'm seeing yeah. the fourth on those. Which, gotcha. Interested in any of those? Going after any of those? What are you doing? Uh, no, not those three. I'll, I'll get probably one or two pairs of the OG just because of the historical historical backing. I love that shoe. I can wear it to work. Um, I've always wanted that shoe, but never wanted to pay for it. Never was the price that I wanted. Which so one? The the OGs, the 1.0 OGs. Purple fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. heel Purple cups. Heel cup? That's yeah. what you're, go- you're going for those. That's on it. the first, yeah. uh, but out of those four shoes, that's the only one. You're not going for the Canes at all. I'm not, man. Gosh, I think right. you should, so we can see if they're either diarrhea or <laughs> that's fucking exactly turf what green. I want. Dude, no, the new fo- the new photos I saw on Champs look different than the Adidas stock. But photos. dude, that Kano guy who mm. works for Adidas um, that that I follow, I think you probably follow him too. Who does a lot of hey, here's what's coming up, and kind of gives alludes to some things. He just posted another fucking diarrhea version. Oh, he did yesterday. Yeah, I didn't see that. I saw the photos on Champs, and they didn't look diarrhea, uh, or they didn't look puke. Yeah. Is it is it puke orange or diarrhea orange? Either way, either way, uh, it's not good. It's not good. But what what here's the crazy thing is the new photos I saw, the orange looked brighter. I did looks like that. Miami Hurricane orange. I know, but exactly. the green still looked shitty. The green still looked like it had too too much bright lime hits in the yeah. in the prime knit. Not only that, but the 4.0 prime knit. I'm fucking over it. I it too. looks like shit. It's the worst. Um, it doesn't feel. I mean, it doesn't feel bad. It doesn't feel great. But more importantly, it looks like shit. <laughs> just, yeah. you know, that's the most important thing. I just Not don't. The, there's only a couple pairs of 4.0s I really like. And I think I only have one pair currently that I've held right. on to. And that is the cookies and cream. And those are right. fucking dope to yep. me. I love that pair. I like the 3.0 pattern better. And that was arguably one of the most hated pairs yeah, at the, the time the, that it uh, came out. Yeah, stretch mark joints. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't like this 4.0. I can't do it, man. It's like I wish a they fish would just start, scale kind of I wish of they would weird. stop 4.0s and just make them all climbers. The yeah. climb of fucking upper is dope, dude. It it's is. like a mix of a one point. It's like a more of a breathable one point oh. Super breathable, the f- dude. That teal pair I have, the fucking black, the f- the mint joint, bro. That one point oh prime knit is so dope on the climbers. Yeah. Like I, I'm in love with that pattern. Not by that. It's like a hybrid one point oh. One of your favorites, dude. Yeah, I think it is my favorite. I mean, yeah. it's like a hybrid one point oh. It's one point oh, soft, um, super breathable. We talked about one point oh pattern the other day, as far as it being stretchy yeah. and stuff, and we had some YouTube comments respond to that. We'll Cradled to by minute, the but, hands of God. Yeah, yeah, that dude. Is what I spoke on. Yeah, <laughs> I, uh, I think the one point oh clima is yeah. a better version of that. I think it's a little bit more stretchy. I think it's yeah. a little bit more breathable. It's not super, as tight fitting. Yeah. Um, I just love the clima, dude. I can't oh, say enough way, about them. What? what we got on today? 1.0 triple blacks. Oh, 1.0s, man. Nice. I love the 1.0s. I'm going to start I'm going to start fucking just driving those every day. 1.0s. Sp- speaking of triple blacks, what tell me this. Why are they releasing an Ultra Boost 4.0 triple black on December 2nd with these? Dude, what the fuck is that? It's the Hasn't same, this released 16 the, times? It looks I'm the so fucking confused. same as last year's. God, you're Dude, killing me. You, call, you called me out for that because I got that pair and you're like, oh yeah, the fucking tuxedo joint? Get yeah. the fuck out of here. <laughs> right. The pinstripe ugly shitheads? Right. Yeah. No. It, did, did anything change it's, on this? It's not good. The red torsion on the bottom, is you that new? Maybe it's the retro from last year because it looks the fucking same. It looks the exact same. I mean, I know they've released a couple versions with the plastic cage, a couple yeah. without. This one yeah. is without. 3D the, textured uh, heel cup, whatever. Yep, that heel cup. And it's like the, I don't even know what, what you would call that cage. It's like a, it's like it's not, not, the, leather, not the vinyl, but, but the like... <laughs> <laughs> it's not TPU. It's not Clima. Almost like more of a fabric. Dude, vinyl's a good. It's probably is almost vinyl. more like a vinyl fabric. It kind of does look like vinyl. Cage. I bet vinyl. Yeah, I would go with vinyl cage. Vinyl. 
Oh, <laughs> it's funny. I zoomed in to show you, and I zoomed in <laughs> like you a think, piece of the white yeah. screen. You fire. think the final is vinyl, huh? Yes, I do. All right. um, you have anything more on sneakers? Anything more you're looking forward to? We've already we've already talked about the shitty Yeezy salts that come out this this yep. fucking uh, Friday canes, or Saturday. Canes, canes, canes. I want to ask you about the. Uh, do you think those are available locally? Am I or am I going to have to get them online? Uh, wait for them to come in. Be pissed off when they do come in, or can I go see them locally? Unfortunately, our uh, uh, our assist, I know our, dude, our helpers a bad yeah. run with some connects lately. Yeah, our connects uh, are, are kind of falling by the wayside. Gosh, so I, a, it is hard enough to get shoes in Denver anyway, yeah. and now that like our connects are falling apart, <laughs> it's even worse. Our connects heads are falling yeah, off. Yeah, they, they are, dude. It's it's bad. All right, I just yeah. figured I'd, I I'd check with you um, see if you knew any. Uh, if if so, you, you might you them. might see them at Champs or you might see it at some of the Beacon store finish lines, but I don't know for sure. Anything more on Supreme JJ? Anything more on the uh, the drop today or any any uh, hypey shit before yeah. you move on from sneakers? Yeah, for sure. What do you got? Uh, you know the Canary uh, Diamond Supply Dunk Low. Did you get yes. a pair? I, <laughs> I wish. Dang. To be to be uh, honest, I'm the le- literally the last person to ever get that fucking pair. Fair enough. That's Go on. besides the point. Um, <clears throat> so Sush, uh, su- shoe surgeon, uh, shoe surgeon, yeah, it's tough. Surgeon. It is shoe surgeon. Uh, Five just times developed a uh, Air Jordan One that's uh, inspired by the Diamond Supply Dunk Low. Is this okay. on his gram? Uh, yes, it should I'll be. Go take a look here. <clears throat> So what about it? So what about it? So it's literally the same shoe, just in an Air Jordan 1. So it has the premium features, including the yellow uh, gator and smooth leather oh, yeah, on the f- upper, Japanese uh, tongue leather Friends lining. and family exclusive? I got and then, flames, uh, dude. And it even has the Tiffany Diamond Dunk uh, Nike swoosh that you could detach. Mm. Wow. Dude, that's my goal with this podcast. I just want to get. Th- I just want this shit to get big enough. We can go out there, interview the sh- uh, shoe surgeon on this bitch. That fool is just so sick, dude. Yeah. That's if a, I was more, that's a clean uh, shoe if I was more of a sure. craftsy kind of guy, like I'm a digital creator. Yeah. I create digital content. I'm not very good with art. I'm not. I can't yeah. draw for shit. My handwriting is terrible. I'm bad with the pencil or painting or any kind of like really artsy shit like that. I'm just not great. I'm a creative guy, but mostly digital. Um, this this stuff is so cool to me because I can't do it. You know what I mean? Uh, taking something, whether it's these dunks or the shorts that I have on yeah. from uh, FBCC Bay Area, that full, the way he creates these shorts from old jerseys, the way he creates shoes from old shoes, or the way, it's just fucking sick to me, dude. It's yeah. so sick. I love custom stuff. We've talked about it on here. I know people feel certain ways about customs. Yeah, I love it. I fucking love it, especially when it's executed like this. Yeah, it's perfect. See, dude. that's that's my opinion. So, like, I the don't like is so I don't dope. like customs if it's if it's just regular Joe's doing it. Unfortunately, like, I, I'll just pass and like give me the original. Well, if I could just do give it, me the OG pair. Right. If I um, feel like I could do it, of course I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> that big but of a but fan. if I but if I could get somebody like the this the you know the shoe the shoe the shoe <laughs> surgeon is that what it is <laughs> shoe surgeon because yeah, I don't I, I don't know a lot shoe about surgeon, this guy shoe surgeon 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 so I don't know a lot about this you guy you better get three out that's yeah. tough bro but uh, but uh, yeah man I mean what is it he was asking two thou uh, for the Lux Diamond SB Dunk Low um, no it is, so, it is he's asking two G's that's what I see and it's sold out I I believe it. So no, wait, no, dude, is that you're the not one? that's not even the, the ones you're, dude. It's these. Bro. Oh, you're looking, you're looking at those. At, this is what he's talking. This is what I JJ's said talking canary, about. Canary, dude, Dallas, it's yellow. Been? That's right. I'm way wow. Up. Hold on. Hold Dallas on. doing JJ stuff while conversing with JJ. That's bad, Dal. Got it. I tried to show you too. Yeah, dude, I got it. I got it pulled up, bro. I got it. Man. Yeah, got it. Yeah. I got it. But look at yeah, that's still. You don't see uh, you don't see that though. Yeah, you don't see the that's Tiffany tight. swoosh. That's how that's Ill. pulled back. Yeah, dude. Kind of like Look the rookie that. of the year where you have exposed accolades, whereas this one you have just an exposed Tiffany blue colorway. Yeah, it's like that off white type of thing. Yeah, that's pretty. Strange. This is dope. Luckily for you, uh, listening. Well, actually, if you're listening, you're gonna have to figure it out yourself. But if you go to the shoe surgeon's Instagram, it's on there. Yep. You can see the canary yellow and Tiffany dunks there. But if you're on YouTube, we'll put up the correct picture, not the one Dallas has been looking at for the past five minutes while correct. we're having the so, combo. I guess I have one question for you guys. Go ahead. Would you guys take the Air Jordan 1 or the low? The, oh, the dude, the Jordan low. 1 for sure. Jordan Fuck one. the low. Yeah. I'd throw the low into the river. Yeah. Fuck the low. That thing looks like shit. I wouldn't even buy that shoe. I wouldn't buy that shoe if it was $120. I think that thing looks like shit. I think Dunk Lows in general look like shit. 
I'm not a dunk low guy at all. I'm more of a Jordan one low than I am dunk low. And I'm not all even right. I'm not even that huge on Jordan one lows. They're cool. Some pairs. I've had a couple pairs in the past, but uh, dunk lows owned one pair ever. Hated them. Thought they looked like poop. And uh, not to say that there won't ever be a pair that I want, but I'm not like a lot of people where I'm jumping out the window for the canaries or the diamond dunks or Mm-mm. any of that shit. I, I even think even though the like the history behind it and everything. It's all about or style not, for me, dude. Not the history, but the that's a collector. That's it. more Dallas. Dallas's lane for me. It's all about style. How can dude. I style that shoe? How does it look stylistically? And to me, it looks but wide. It looks like I have a huge. What's up? It would work perfectly with what you're wearing right now. Other than the Tiffany blue, that would Canary be like, and Maze are not the same yellows. Okay, my bad. They ain't the same, bro. Yeah. They ain't the same, nah, bro. It's same. To be honest, I didn't even know what kind of yellow that was. Maze. So Maze. Okay. Maze. The Maze Sounds and good. blue. The ma- I love how you get so offended. All right, cool, man. No, no, I was just, I was just saying, man. I'm just kidding, JJ. I'm just fucking with you, dog. Uh, yeah, you got to go with the Jordan one. Jordan one. They look so way better, dude. Just is. They look fucking yeah. sick, man. I love that I turned you around on Jordan ones too, Dal. I know, man. I you, love that. You did. You that did. Makes me happy. Sure. Makes my heart happy. Well, because I never thought I could pull them off, but as you pushed and pushed and said, "This is the <laughs> shoe," uh, I figured out I could. And again, it was a way of styling it, just like you said. Yeah. Just like you allude to, dude. If you can find a way to fucking style it. You're in. And that's so big for me, me on, on most it pairs took of me shoes. A while. Cause dude, I've been wearing dad jeans since fucking, you know, nineteen eighty seven. Right. Okay. Levi's five oh ones. I don't know any better. Yeah. Until the last like what five years maybe is where I've kind of really started to kind of change that. Um and just not wear stuff that I was still wearing in high school. I think style in general kind of changed. You yeah. and I were Levi's guys forever, dude. Ever. That's pretty much all we rock. And we'll still do it. And I still yeah, I still I just I wore a pair yeah. on the podcast the other yeah. day, I think, or I don't know if it was on the podcast, maybe it was I don't know. Anyway. But uh uh, now we've kind of day. branched out a little bit, yeah. different jeans, different shit. But it was always more shoes for us. Yeah, and we still yep. do things affordable, but we're finding finding ways to uh, to we're just finding ways to fit in to society and what yep. style is and what's hyped now, but not maybe pay those prices. We kind of create our own hype, but it's gauged off of what is current. Totally. So, yeah. I mean, just wait till we start putting out most underrated shirts uh, and our own shit. I, won't, I can't I won't wait. wear any fucking. I can't wait to have the shit. loser juice shirts. <clears throat> I can't wait to have the fucking love tank shirts. Yeah, I'm already ready. I'm already ready already. JJ, anything more on this shit? Um, do you guys? Yeah, I got one more. Um, do you guys remember growing up, or because you guys were kind of we're old? Okay, it's fine, JJ. I'm Go not on. saying that. You guys kind of grew up in like rural areas, so I don't know. How was your style back in the day when you guys were kids? Did you shit. guys grow up with Stussy by Levi's any Levi's 501s and fucking shit kickers. I, I, I worked on a farm. I heard Stussy, but I didn't have any Stussy. Yeah. Okay. Well. Because <laughs> I worked on a farm. I worked on a farm. I had shit kickers and Levi's 501s. <laughs> okay. That's sort of what I thought, but because. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. right. Well, that's kind of what I was thinking. Go ahead, JJ. Awesome. Well, Stussy was. Uh, Kind of a big skater brand back in the day yep. and everything. Dude, they were huge in the 90s. Yeah. 92 to 94. Stussy. And not going to lie. They, their hype has kind of died by a lot. Don't but, lie, please. Um, Don't lie to us, JJ. But it's coming back. Yeah. I bought a Stussy hat. I bought a Stussy dad hat the other day. I was going to say, I feel like you had or yeah. have some Stussy. I do. I don't want do. any, but well, uh, Susie is reuniting with uh, Nike SB and making another Zoom Blazer mid model, and this is it. I don't know. It it will. L- let me just show you. Real <laughs> wow, <quick. laughs> wow, whoa! Those are kind of dope to me. Yeah, that's I a franchise shoe those. for me, man. I that's... fuck with those. It's an interesting yeah. shoe. Did you think I would fuck with those? Sure. Yeah, right when you saw them. I like those. I already for fucking pre-ordered sure. them for you. Did you? I knew they were your shoe. Nice. Shoes. Yeah. True to size 12 in the Blazers. Yeah. And the cool thing about these shoes is that if you were lucky enough to be in the friend, uh, fam- friends fam- and family. Yeah. Friends and family, yep. Yeah. Uh, you one were of, lucky enough to get one of 50 40, pairs. 48 pairs. 50. I see one of 48. I see one of 50. Painted by Lance Mountain himself, dog. Damn, what's the spread? 48 How or 50? Fire is that? That's pretty dope. Where are you getting your news? Damn. Because I'm on Hype Beast. When do these drop? I'm on Soul Collector. Oh. When do these drop and are they available to the public? And if there's only 50 pairs, I'd imagine no one's getting one. Am I right on this? There's no wide release. No. There's 50 pairs. They're all hand painted by uh, Lance Mountain himself. It sounds like there's going to be a. F- uh, friends and family but there might it's kind of 
uh, so it there, just says stay tuned for more. There release is going to be a, there is going to be a, a regular release. There is going to be yeah. a regular release, but don't expect the same Lance Mountain treatment on the retail pair. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, these these fifty or these forty eight pairs is what I see. JJ, we can argue it's fifty. That's fine. But Dude. between forty eight and fifty pairs, all. Hand done by Lance. And he painted the fire. box. I just saw. JJ they, uh, showed me the box. It says yeah, Nike and SB and it's like stencil painted on there. Yeah, look, I even see. And JJ, then what are you talking? S- fucking yeah, that's, that's 6 of 48, dog. Wow, it does say 6 of 48 right there. I'm just saying. So is hi- hype so, beast. Hype beast is fucking not hyped. That's a, that's honestly a hype beast mistake. If you have pictures on there and sure. it's literally written out six of forty eight, six of forty eight, and then you write in the article one of fifty, one of fifty. Or what whatever. happens if it changed though? What it, what changed? They made two more or three more pairs. Lance only wanted two to paint more forty eight pairs. pairs. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have the energy to go over how many fucking pairs they're supposed yeah. to be. Anyway, uh, but that I is do definitely think they're a dope. shoe for you, man. But if they're uh, here's the thing: if they're just the yellow without the paint on them, I don't think it's my shoe anymore. Interesting. I think the paint on them adds to re- the reason I love the shoe. It almost gives it a, tr- uh, a cheetah print effect. I think you know what I mean. Yeah, I it think does. That's what they were going. So for. if they don't have that that on there. I don't know if I'm as geeked on the I'm shoe. Pretty sure they will. It just won't be as custom. I don't care about that. If it looks similar it looks to that, like I'm that, cool. Yeah, it's not going to be hand cool. painted, obviously, but it could be manufacturerly. Yeah, easy. I, and I'm not a blazer guy, other yeah. than the off white blazers. I really like Same. the off whites. I'm not a huge, uh, normally a huge fan of blazers because they're these not comfortable. Soup, right? Right. These are super dope. Yeah. Um, I really like those ones a lot. Cool. So yeah, I, f- I fuck Full with those. Show. Is that uh, is that all you got? Yeah, I like it. Kind of every uh, direction there, sneakers, fashion. Let's jump into some YouTube comments, man. Let's go. Um, this is a good spot Uh-oh. for that. This is this is not going to go well. Uh, why not? I literally. <clears throat> why do you think I was literally here all day yesterday and watched you just call or uh, reply to? No, I didn't reply. Ask. I didn't reply. I only re- I only pri- replied to a couple cats. Um, and it's just because there's people that are that come in here, and they they're not coming in here to fuck with the show. They're not here for the show. They're not weekly yeah, supporters of the show. They're not motherfuckers that are trying to join the DraftKings League and be involved in the show. Okay? Okay? That's what the fuck's going on. So when these motherfuckers come in here, I need to let them know that this ain't that kind of fucking channel. Okay? This ain't that kind of fucking show. You're not just going to come in here and do some... Actually, you could come in here and do your drive-by bullshit comments, but I'm going to fuck you up in the comments too. And then you're probably not going to reply because you already moved on to your gaming channel. But I'm going to let you know your 12-year-old little self is a bitch ass. Okay, hiding behind the fucking keyboard. So anyway, <clears throat> let's start off with the comments. Um, Mike the man, love this guy. Goat running a three-year scam, and we all fall for it hook, line, and sinker. They are absolutely pulling a fast one on us. I wish you would elaborate because I don't know what you're talking about, but I would like to know. Uh, so if you feel if you want to elaborate in the comments of this podcast, so we can maybe talk about it on the next one. Um, I'm still not sure that would get us to where we need to be because I'd probably have some more questions and it would probably go back and forth. Dow, do you know? Do you understand this? These comments at all, by chance? Uh, goat running a three-year scam and we all fell for it. Hook, line, and sinker. They are absolutely pulling a fast one on us. Yeah. What so, does that mean? So I do know some about the uh, something about the goat scam. So they had to fire quite a few people who authenticated shoes. Whoa. Uh, what was happening was uh, they were actually. Uh, switching boxes, switching what? shoes from people. Serious? Yeah, dude. No shit. Where so, did, when was this happening? Uh, so, happen? Where have I been? Dude, have you, did you know about this no, too? No. I, oh, I, 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 I even got an email from Goat CEO saying, hey, we did some, we God, did some house cleaning. Wrecked. Dude, we did some house cleaning, dog. Be better, you know, right? we're better. Goat's not known we're for better. this. <laughs> we, Goat's not known for this. We're better than this. You know, that kind of shit. They oh, literally, they literally so sent this fucking email and I don't know where I read that. I think it was sent to me personally. I don't know why the fuck it was sent to me. Why was sent to you i don't know bought it just as much and sold as much but oh go ahead that did happen sorry so uh (laughs) they said and it was with their authentication people um there was a few bad eggs in there and again they were switching people's shoes out for reels and fakes and telling the consumers who sold them uh that they they were fake oh shit they were pocketing either the money pocketing the shoes um all kinds of weird shit but that has been taken care of but goat yeah goat that was wild dude so that's all i know on that that is crazy. I just got an email saying uh, we got a new uh, person that just joined our league on DraftKings. Is it Lorenzo? No, it's not Lorenzo. 
Hey, but, uh, by the way, uh, the Paul the Paul George PlayStation joints are available today to pick up uh, via the uh, well, they're not available to pick up pick up, but the raffle in store is available for uh, two of our Park Meadows and Aurora Mall store, and submissions close tonight at nine. So if you're interested in checking out the PlayStation Paul Georges, we do have them locally. Are you? Uh, well, we do, we do here in Denver. You guys may or may not. It's yeah. within your Foot Locker app. If you guys are familiar with their new raffle system on how they do the Foot Locker app. Yeah. That is how I've gotten every single W that I've had over the past few months is the Foot Locker app. I'll put you guys up on a little bit of game, whether it's Foot Locker or Finish Line. Finish Line does something similar now. It's all about completing the three steps. You have to enter the raffle, which is step number one. Yep. You have to, be, you don't have to, but if you're a platinum member, and I don't know the amount of money you've spent, but it's a certain uh, amount in a year. 300 $300 in a year, you become a platinum member. Yep. That is box number two. You get a little bit extra head start for that. Yep. And then obviously number three is going and checking in at the store. Dallas and I go do this shit weekly. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we're lucky enough to go in there and um, they'll give us the code and Dallas can just call me with the code or vice versa. We can give each other the code and then the other person doesn't have to go in there. Sometimes they're dick faces and they make us drive in there and they say, "Oh man, the beacon's working. You got you got we hit the beacon, bro. The code, bro. We just can't. Not yeah. to not to no no offense. I, that's probably a little harsh. Not to, what did I say? They're douchebags. What did I? Dick faces. Oh, dick, dick faces. faces. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. I don't even know what the fuck I said. That was harsh. I'm, that was fucking rude. I'm sorry. Dick they're faces. just doing their job. But from time to time, they make it a little bit harder yeah. by not giving you the code. Meaning. I have to drive down to the mall, go in and check in. Dallas has to drive down to the mall, go in, check in. It just makes it a little bit more of a hassle. But if you check all three of those boxes, I haven't lost. Yep. I think you're the same way. I think we're undefeated. Yeah, if you can check all three, uh, it's it's hard to I lose, dude. It's hard to lose. Yeah. And uh, our Foot Locker down south has been getting most of the heat. We've yeah. been getting pretty much every release. Yeah. I assume so. That's how I got. Uh, that's how I've gotten everything from all the Yeezys I've copped lately. Whether it was the Desert Wrap 500s when the blush first came out, the new Zebra release, the Sesames. I had the Jordan uh, One Pines. I actually left those at the store. I didn't even pick them up. I wanted the Court Purples. They didn't get them there. Right. Um, so I won the Pines. Didn't you know which pair I didn't up. win there by doing that? Um, I didn't get the uh, the NRG Jordan One uh, Gold Toes. No shit. I didn't get those. You missed on. I missed those. The, with all three boxes all checked? All three boxes checked. Wow. I did miss those. That's Interesting. the only miss I've ever had when I've had all three boxes gotcha. checked. Gotcha. So I'm undefeated. You have missed one out. Got now, missed. finish line, my winner circle number got fucked up with my finish line account, and I had to create a You're whole new winner circle thing. Because I'm getting killed over that. And that matters. Don't get it twisted. That winner circle matters for sure. Well, here's. It's, what I'm ahead. finding out is it's just like the sneakers app. Dude, you and I talked about it. Yeah. If we go ahead and buy a bunch of fucking GRs and just go return them, possibly, let me put you on some game. Yeah, Not put, you, but our listeners. Yeah. Uh, More game for you, motherfucker. Let's go, let's go fucking return those at the Nike outlet here in Castle Rock and fucking get that money back because we have that money to front. You know, we don't, we don't need that money like right now. So we have that ability to do that. Dude, that just increases your chances on sneakers app. I have to believe that, dog. The algorithm, the algorithms are all based off of how much you purchase, whether it it's Foot Locker, Finish Line, or sneakers. Sneakers, you don't have a dedicated platinum number and all this shit, but best believe that algorithm yeah. and whether you get certain releases are dictated on how much you fucking spend on Guaranteed. there. They're di dictated on how much. So if you ever, if you're continue, if you continue to take L's on all the big releases, but that's all you do is go for the big releases. You don't buy any GR shoes. You don't buy just a random pair of vapor max. Yeah. You didn't buy your girlfriend, just a nice little pair of air maxes for a birthday on there. You're probably not going to get lucky on the sneakers app. And you, maybe, Dog. maybe you do, but it's going to be more of 50, 50. I'm than if you, 12 this year. On hype sneakers on sneakers, on sneakers app because you're not fuck buying anything app. else, right? Yeah, right. I'm, I'm gonna buy all the GRs. I'm gonna go fucking return them, and I'm gonna prove this shit. So if you have a Nike store locally, what Dallas and I are basically saying is, uh, to test the theory, we're gonna buy a bunch of GR shit off sneakers, go return it to the Nike store because we obviously don't want it, yeah. and hopefully that will boost our status within the sneakers app. We will update back, let yeah. you guys know how this shit went. I think it's a great plan, but. Uh, Finish line, I'm getting fucked because my winner circle points were no longer connected to my account. And yep. it was such a hassle. I spent an hour online with finish line. That's JJ. I'm in here arguing with these fucks one day. And of course they won't. It's not a simple transfer. I'm like, fuck it. I'm just going to have to create a whole new winner circle number. Start over. Start fresh. I'm already winning everything from Foot Locker. I'm fine. I'm still getting the shoes. This is just my backup plan anyway. So I started over, and guess what? I have my first purchase with that winner circle number. It was a pair of Yeezy Sesames on a restock for a homie here that works at the, uh, the shop. Nice. So boom, 220 I spent there. I'm happy You're about it. You're back in there. I'm back in the game. I probably still got to buy a couple more things. Go buy some socks. Go buy some but, fucking cleaners. Yeah. You'll be fine. Right, exactly. Um, 
So let's move on. YouTube comments here. This is funny. You ready for this? Ready. This is you guys check this fucking out. This gentleman, very poor podcast. Okay. Huh. To which I respond. Ready for this? He says very poor podcast. Nothing else. No context. Nothing about yeah. uh, not referring to what was poor or who or why. So they appreciate the help, man. Thanks for making us better. You're you're a good guy. But I said, really? Did you listen to the whole thing? He said yes. I said, oh, and you still thought it was that, you still thought it was that poor? He said yes. I said, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny to me, dude. Dang literally, it. I was all high, <laughs> typing last night, <laughs> just going back and forth. I was so fucking high, dude. I was laughing. I literally almost tears in my eyes just at the fact that I just, I was like, you listened to the whole thing? Yes. And it was still poor. Or yes. still, I said, still very poor. Yes. Dang it. <laughs> I don't know why I thought, dude, I was fucking dying. I thought it was, I thought it was hilarious. Anyways, um, thank you for coming in and out of uh, the comments section uh, and listening to the podcast for two minutes. I appreciate your bitch ass. Next comment, the homie Brian Valencia. Broncos remaining schedule is pretty easy. They should win out. I hope my jinx is strong on this post though. This mm. fool's a fucking Raider fan. He's, uh, yeah, he he's a homie from back in yep. the day. He's a big Raider fan. He follows us on Twitter. He's always exactly fucking with us. exactly who the dude is. Love this guy, dude. He's yeah. a, And what I love about Brian is he's one of the real fucking sports totally. fans you'll ever meet he knows the Raiders suck he knows his team sucks yeah. he knows Derek Carr sucks he knows Gruden's running the shit into the ground and, and he constantly is on Twitter bitching about it and talking yeah. about it and adding the Oakland Raiders adding the fucking Raider Nation shit and uh, he's just constantly roasting his own squad for not doing better which um, if you're a Raider fan you've had quite a drought I mean oh, what are we talking 02 01 with tuck rule season when oh, that's Gruden right. and Brady yeah, and all that right. bullshit. When did that go down? Oh, two, oh, three. Maybe? Oh, I don't even know. Yeah, into oh, three. Yeah. That's the last gasp of success that those guys really yeah, had. Yeah. I mean, tasting success in the postseason, obviously Super I'm, Bowl. I'd like to say bless their hearts. But fuck those guys. Yep. Um, here we go. Next one. Calling yourself underrated and then proceeding to talk about hype clothes and football. The irony, <laughs> which I uh, simply replied. Let's see. What did I reply? Uh, what does one have to do with the other? LOL, seriously, though, how is that ironic? Are you over here using words outside of your vocabulary again, Keenster? Because <laughs> his name was Keentastic. Which... You know what I would have replied? I would have replied, it's like 10,000 spoons when all, all you, you need, need is, is a knife. knife. Damn. That's what I would have hit him with. That's, that's what damn, it should have been. You should have said, dang it. Damn it. Dallas, why aren't you fucking in the comments in here clapping back on some of these it's fucks? Not, I will. What I will. are you doing? I don't know, man. Am I'm, I the only mother... What the fuck are I, you doing, I'm Dal? the no time god, so it's like 10,000 spoons when all I need is a fucking knife. <laughs> when all you need is a minute. All right. Uh, anyway, yeah, so I just talk shit. This is, a, again, another motherfucker, but um, coming in here, coming in and out. Thomas, my guy, what came out of your mouth at 28? I actually went back and looked. I don't know if you're talking about what came out of my mouth as far as what I was saying about Tua two, two Tagovailoa. Or what, like uh, physically, something came you, out of my mouth. Did you throw a spitball? Dude, I thought, I was like, I don't know, I probably spit. Like, But I rewatched the clip and I didn't Is see it? anything JJ, physically JJ, you watched out of my it three mouth, or four but, times uh, right when you edited it. So what'd you see? No, I didn't see At anything. At the 28th minute of the last, of the 24th podcast, did you see something fly out yeah. of my mouth? When the podcast is two fucking hours long? Mm. No. You didn't, Maybe, ca yeah. you didn't catch that on the edit, huh? Well, huh. gotcha. Uh, but if, if, if the gentleman was referring to what I was talking about, about uh, Tua, yeah. I was simply stating that I don't think I think uh, he's going to have trouble winning the Heisman this year because Alabama is simply too good. Too good. And um, to which which I got a uh, couple people hit me on Twitter. Toner man hit. Toner man did. A couple other people did talking about. A couple people DM me talking about how uh, look at his national championship game last year. Look at trying to give some examples, and I'm like, well, they're not going to vote. You know, Heisman voters aren't going to go back right. to last year yeah. and compare and and anoint him a Heisman Trophy winner for this season. Yeah. It's based off what he did this season. Yeah. We're not we're not going back and comparing Kyler Murray's season yeah. last year when Baker Mayfield was playing and Kyler Murray was holding yeah. the clipboard. Or is the, he true fresh? I don't even know. It's not the tattoo industry right, where exactly. we look back in the past. So I don't know where he was going with that, but anyway, it uh, doesn't really matter. This is good shit. Refs are actually sanctioned by the UFC or by the uh, Athletic Commission, not by UFC. Good. Um, I did see that, yeah. Yep. Thank you. Thank you for that knowledge. That's, so that's Jay Nasty good. coming through with that one. Uh, we we kind of said I I don't know where that comes know. from so that's why Herb Dean was refing the Chuck Liddell yeah um, Tito Ortiz so dude let's take this opportunity yeah to uh to drop a little audio from Dana White love it here uh, I got a couple different sound bites I'm gonna play you the first one from Dana White and this is him um, talking about the Chuck Liddell 
Tito Ortiz fight that occurred that was put on by Golden Boy Productions and Oscar De La Hoya. Yep. If you're unfamiliar, Oscar runs that. Oscar and Dana have gone back and forth quite a bit. Oh, bad and, blood uh, for years. Yep. And this is just the next chapter of that. So let's uh, let's jump into the sound from Dana White on Oscar De La Hoya and the Chuck Liddell Tito Ortiz fight. Listen, I, I love Chuck Liddell, and I don't ever want to badmouth Chuck Liddell or even you know. People even think I'm remotely bad mouth to Chuck Liddell. But the reality is, first of all, let, let's, let's, let's say this first. I, I, I heard last week the cokehead, Oscar De La Weirdo, is, is, is talking shit that, that, that I don't have any, uh, you know, place to tell guys when to retire. You know, I don't tell friends when. First of all, it's called friendship. Friendship, you fucking cokehead. I've been friends with, with Chuck Liddell you know, for, for, for 20 years. And the reality is that Chuck Liddell retired when he should have retired, eight, nine years ago, however long it was. Um, and Chuck Liddell's almost 50 years old and has no business fighting anymore. And the fact that the, that the state of California even let that... Okay, I don't know why it cut off there. But basically, he just comes in. Or, oh, I, that's the end of the sound clip. I have another clip, which is a little bit separate. But he's talking about the state of uh, California Athletic Commission, how they even let that happen yeah. was basically what he what he finished out there with. But the funny shit is, what about the Oscar De La Weirdo yeah. blast coming out? Cokehead Coke blast. Cokehead, for sure. He called him uh, Oscar De La Cokehead later on in the, in the um, interview. But just to react to some of his comments there, I completely 100% agree. Chuck Liddell stepped out of the octagon when he should have stepped out of yep. the octagon. There's no reason for him to come back and take this fight. He obviously shouldn't have been in there fighting. He got knocked out in the first round. Yep. Not to say Tito Ortiz is some great opponent and he should be fighting either. None of these guys should be fighting. Right. This shit was embarrassing. That's why I didn't even know. I didn't even know it was going on at the time. I heard it was coming up, but I totally forgot about it. It was out of sight, out of mind. I didn't see a bunch of shit on a, a social media about it. Um, I think it was bad job by Golden Boy. Bad job by Oscar De La Hoya on that. Let me play the uh, second sound clip from uh, Dana White, and then I'll get your opinion on it here. Chuck Liddell has an incredible legacy. He's a huge superstar in this sport. So, of course, as a friend, anybody who claims to be a friend of Chuck Liddell and was anywhere near this fight is full of shit. They're not a friend of Chuck Liddell. To let him go in and fight this fight is it, terrible. So that's kind of uh, the comments there from Dana White, um, how he feels about Chuck Liddell. What do you think? I agree. Uh, Chuck Liddell, yeah, I mean, he is way too old to be in there. Not that he's not in great shape. He looked great. Dude, I, I, I strive to look is that great. Is he that hurting 50. for money, you think? Um, or did Oscar, con, Not I want to say con, but did Oscar persuade him and had to talk him into this? I think it's more of persuasion. I don't think Chuck is hurting for money. Um, I don't think Tito is. Tito is still in the industry. Or is it field. Chuck that went to Oscar and said, hey, I want to fucking fight? No. Which way do you think this I, went? I think there was persuasion. I would think there was, hey, th you know, selling a dream. Like, hey, man, let's get you back out there. Let's like old times. Let's get your people that have always followed you. Let's get you back in the limelight here. And I don't think it, money really didn't matter to Chuck. I don't think – we don't see Chuck hurting for money. We don't see Chuck coming out there saying, you know, with, with money problems. Yeah. We don't see bankruptcy issues. We don't see that type There's of shit. There's a lot of stuff that goes on I behind the scenes, I think though. there was a dream sold, yeah, uh, is what I personally – because that's how De La Hoya is. You know, and he has his money – and his promotions, that is the forefront. De La Weirdo. Let's get it right. De La Cokehead. De La Cokehead. <laughs> Oscar De La Weirdo. Oscar De La Cokehead. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I don't like it, man. I, it sucked to see Liddell in there because the legacy in which he has had and will always have, this was, this was a fight that, that goes against that. I think it's just one of those situations. I'm, I'm with you. I don't know for sure if Chuck was hurting for money. Yeah. I just think it's one of those situations. Dana's so on point with that. If you're a friend of Chuck Liddell yeah. what are you doing? and you're saying, yeah, you're hyping him up, saying get in there and get in there and do this, there, there's a point in time where um, you got to be real with your friends. Mm -hmm. And you know this more than anything. I give you the most honest, straightforward advice. I do the same to you, yep. whether it's projects we're working on together, where it's something you're working on individually and I have no say and you just ask me my opinion. I'm always fucking real with you guys. And I feel like if you're going to be a friend to somebody and you're not real with them, then you're not really a friend. Exactly what he said. You're not really a friend down the line. You're not. If you're going to tell somebody five years down the road, ah, man, I thought about, how, you know, when you started doing that. I was going to tell you not to. Yeah. I was going to tell you not to do that, man. And then five years down the road after the dude fucked up his life or made some bad decisions or made some decisions that maybe you didn't agree with, and now you want to give him that fucking knowledge? Get the fuck out of here. Fucking slap your bitch ass. Be direct. Say what you mean. Mean what you say. Man the fuck up. 
and be a good friend to people. Be yeah. direct with people. You're hurting your friends. You're hurting people by not being account by not uh, being up front with them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Letting yeah. them letting them house that blame and everything like that. When you had a different opinion and you had a way you could even if they don't take your advice, yeah. If as long as you're real with them and you know you gave them that advice, then five years down the road. No regrets. No regrets. Whatever that went, whether it went really well or really bad, you yeah. were real with them up you front. You did your part. Yeah. You were real. Exactly. You you lament you know them better than anybody else in theory. Yeah. And you gave them sound respectable advice right exactly i and i think that's the only way to go you can lead them to water but you can't make them drink it man but you at least helped in aiding in what was good for them uh let's keep the comments moving here being passionate in your podcast is authentic regardless of the topic keep up the good work thanks appreciate it uh what brought you guys to colorado i'll let you kind of go first on that Dale. yeah for me uh my family and i we were farmers uh back in southwest kansas a place called ulysses uh lived there all my life uh up until the point where it was finally we had talked about it for years on years we got to get to colorado got to get to that it's the golden state it's the most beautiful state arguably in in the in, in, in the u.s and we always felt that way i would that, tell you to shut the fuck up but the secret's already out everyone yep. knows everyone's moving here totally. Ten thousand people fuck out month, of here it's worse killing our fucking housing market you know <laughs> yeah yeah um so that was a it everyone was a, already knows it was a family move so we wanted to just get out of the flatlands and get to the mountains you know my mom's family has lived here this is where my mom's from originally so there was a lot of um you know roots obviously here that that uh that needed to come back anyways um so that was something we wanted to do as a family and we finally did we moved to the western slope uh, a place called montrose colorado uh, and that's where we started our colorado endeavors and then my parents montrose up. and that's like how far outside of denver that's uh denver it's uh denver it's about four and a half hours okay five hours roughly and on western 70. slope yeah western gotcha. slope. Yep. so it's kind of on the border of utah and colorado is gotcha. where grand junction is. so more like you yeah. more southwest if you're looking at a map it's more southwest yeah, of yeah, denver absolutely. Yeah, about four absolutely. and a half hours southwest yeah. uh, so out there. we ended up in montrose which that's 60 miles south of grand junction grand junction is almost the border of utah and colorado but uh we got up there loved it, it was that was great. high school you moved here yeah i moved so you, my senior oh, gotcha. year dog wow, so that's weird uprooted and that was my choice i could have stayed with the homies and, and I, sometimes i still think i should but uh i should have but uh because i missed some cool things but I wanted out of that small town. Like, I didn't want to do what my dad did. I didn't want to do farming. I didn't want to work at the fucking Pioneer Electric Company. Like, I wanted to be my own man, make my own self. And unfortunately, when you live in a small town, the opportunities are small. And that's what most people do. So I wanted to get to the bigger city, bigger opportunities, and knew that I was probably going to end up in Denver anyways, whether it was in college yeah. or whatever. And that's exactly what happened. Yep. So parents split up. Uh, mom moved up here back to where her family has always lived and always been. So she got to be rooted back with her family and those deep ties that she had for many, many years. And my dad stayed in Montrose. They're best friends. It's good. The relationship is still good. Nice. Uh, we still spend holidays together most times, but uh, I did the college thing and uh, stayed up here and, you know, here's what we're doing. Podcast now. What about you? Uh, family, dude. Born and raised here. D gotcha. Born and raised in Colorado, man. Uh, I moved out a couple different parts of Colorado, but uh, always Colorado, born and raised. Lived in a couple different states when I was younger. Mm -hmm. um, just moving around, living in Washington State with my mom. Yeah. Uh, so I, I was moved, lived in the East Coast a little bit. Moved around uh, a little bit as a young kid. Divorced parents. My parents got divorced before I was even one. I think yeah. my dad, uh, quoting my dad, I think he said, the reason I married your mom was to make sure you got my last name. So they were never going to last. Wow. That was uh, basically the Fair reason enough. for marrying my mom to make sure that, uh, that uh, him and I shared the same last name. So... It was never love. It was never, uh, it was, I don't know what it was, but mm. either way they made it work. It was um, I split time between the parents, you know, weekends and all that shit as uh, any divorced um, child can relate to out there. Mm -hmm. And that was it, man. That's, that's kind of how I did it. Uh, moving along. Love all the podcasts. Great stuff. The interview with Teddy was epic. All cool dudes. Nice. Appreciate it. I paid 120 off a of frenzy for the same shoe. Now, I think he's talking either the Rookie of the Years or the Yeezy I Sesame. I think he's talking about the uh, the Ultra Boost, the oh. multicolors. Oh, shit. Okay. Because if you look what at the Sesame's, frenzy? there's no way that, that anybody got Sesame's for 120 It's an app that lets you know yeah. where shit's dropping and everything. Mm -hmm. So it'll just bring you to different sites you may or may not have ever known about. So. Gotcha. 
Oh, just tons of different foot sites yeah, or Euro Caleb sites. Yeah, told or... us about it because it was showing all the complex concepts. He was telling me too. Yeah. Oh, I don't yeah. listen to a lot of stuff Caleb says. So yeah, there's no I'm way. You, there's <laughs> there's no way you got the sesames for 120. So I don't believe it to be those. It could have been the rookie of the years, but I still doubt that. But I think because the Ultra Boost multicolors is what I had on, and that's what's in the picture. I believe it to be those because I did see those going quite under retail. They still are 150 is the average. Yeah. So I could see them going for 120. I bet well, that's aren't what they it just is. on Adidas' site though? Oh no. Dude, they've been everywhere. I got mine from fucking Packers. Those multis though. have been, yeah. I got the creams right. from uh, proper LBC that'll be here tomorrow. Uh, so I, I know. I wish we would have got those creams today, dude. I, I want to take hoping, a look at those. But. We can do it on uh, Mondays. Yeah, we'll do it on Mondays. No, uh, never mind. No, You're fucking... Oh, dude, we got so much, so many issues with the podcast coming up. The holidays yeah, are Yeah, what are we dude. doing, dude? <laughs> well, as far as next week goes, I'm still not sure. Uh, and the next comment <laughs> says, get Dirty Earn on the podcast next week. <laughs> there you go. Guys, all you guys that want Teddy and Dirty Earn, like... I it so would be, fucking busy. Dude, it would be so egotistical for me to think that I could just... Yeah. Ask people Text to drop real quick. their shit and come in here and record a podcast for two and a half hours. Like, that would just be... That would be insane to me. Right. Not for one. For two, it would be hard to stick with our normal format we we go with on Mondays because those guys aren't in sports. Mm -hmm. Teddy, you know, Earn, I don't know about Earn as much, but I know Ted no. is not in sports. I don't think Earn is really into sports. So it would almost be uh, another interview or some kind of other dynamic. I'm still working it out. I'm deciding on what we want to do. But as far as, dude, and we have a couple weeks of we're fine, but then when you get to Christmas, Christmas Eve is on Monday. Mm -hmm. So oh, I'm still shit. down to drop. I'm still down to record it that day. But then what do we drop it on Christmas Day? Like, what do we do there? Then the following week, it's the exact same situation. New Year's Eve is New Monday. Year's, yeah. Do we drop it on New Year's Day? Uh, so I'm kind of, man, I got to do some thinking. Feel free to always leave your comments, man. Yeah. Like, whatever you guys want to do. What you guys would want to hear. What you guys want to see. Yeah, for sure. Uh, next comment. Go back to the fucking vlogs. Um, hmm. Okay. Damn. I don't know. I don't know if that's said with that vitriol or if he's just. I don't know. Uh, there was a comment in there that says separate the I vlogs. I don't really care. Separate the two one? reviews and the vlogs. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, I have I have a lot of a lot of life going on. Yeah. So I do what I can. You know what I mean? Sure. Uh, 1.0. Let's see here. This is good. Let's see. The 1.0 on the original Chinese New Year's, along with the OG 1.0 multicolor, is different knit than other 1.0s, such as the Solars, the Creams, etc. However, the triple black 1.0, which you are wearing today, yep. is similar to the 1.0 Chinese New Year's. So the knit on the retro isn't different from the OG pairs, just the way those models were constructed. The holes in the toe, uh, toe box are much bigger compared to the creams and the solars. What do you think of that, Dow? I think there's probably some validity. I don't to that. have enough pairs to where I can say I know my 1.0 prime knit on my solars is tight as fuck. It's not loose. Yeah. There's not much much give there. But I don't own the 1.0s. I don't own the sure Chinese that. New Year's. I just know from your multicolor 1.0s. I think those are stre just as stretchy as the multis. These are almost more like the Clima. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like similar. This is this is more so, yeah, similar. These, these triple black 1.0s are definitely not as stiff as some <clears> of the ones. Like the Solar Pack are pretty fucking stiff. Um, but uh, yeah, these these are. I would I would agree with some. I would agree with that comment more than not. Yeah, is what I would say. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Good insight there. I don't own uh, every. I don't own all those pairs, so it's hard yeah. for me to judge. Um, also he said, also Dallas, 24 hour, 24 hour fitness is 29 99 a month too. You can do it, bro. Really? I saw it at 30. Uh, I saw Actually, it at 35. I pay 40 bucks. Yeah. Maybe he's talking about a little, in, little entry level promotional joint. Maybe a little holiday special. Oh, maybe a little yeah, get right, true. get right for the fucking winter yeah, special. Like, a little three month deal for 30. If yeah, you, you want to make a difference, go to 24 hour fitness and trash your entire, like what you're eating and redo everything and eat much healthier does Dallas ever does Dallas look like he wants to make a difference I don't know I don't you know, know if he's talk, it was hey, talking shit this may, morning hey, maybe, or maybe you like, fuckers both need to understand that I eat very very healthy for my lunches and for my dinners and maybe I fucking waste my my, my life on fucking breakfast because I want to fucking eat a donut hey I'm not the one concerned about your health I don't give a shit <laughs> about what you're doing or what you're eating I'm not I don't care about your gym habits do what you want to do. All I was saying was I don't know that from what I've known you, I don't know that you're trying to get in there and fucking put on a stringer and be Mr. Jim. Yeah. I don't think you're trying to that's do that. Me. So that's why I'm like, man, eh, fuck it. If he wants to do Planet Fitness, he's not Mr. Jim. So yeah. uh, if he's you know, if he's not in there clanging and banging every morning, what? who cares? Uh, Plus it's not affecting me. So I'm I just not a don't really. Or banger. Yeah. 
Um, you know what? Maybe I'll invite you, man. It's free passes for guest passes, man. I'm all right. I'd just like to bring you in there. I'm all right. No? <laughs> no, I got a lot of stuff. That I got to get back to the fucking vlogs, apparently. Yeah, apparently. Uh, <laughs> Ricky, Ricky of the years are sitting in size yeah. 10 and 12 at Soul Palace here in the, um, which here in the he mall. Meant, which he meant Shoe Palace. I th- that's what I thought. I was like, what is Soul Palace? Let me let me tell you a little story on that. It won't take some. very long. Okay. So Shoe Palace didn't have the shoes on the day that they it's released. here locally? Yep. Okay. They didn't have the shoes the day they released. Okay. At Aurora or at Park Meadows. Here's what happened. The shipment was delayed. Nice. We don't have it. We don't have That's it. That's why they're sitting. Can you text me? Can you get me? Blah, blah, blah. Um, long story short, they came, I think, three days later. I don't know that for sure. Um, and they had a full-size run so everybody and their mom could get them. And they were sitting for a couple of days because nobody knew when fucking Chew Pals finally got them. Gotcha. That was what happened. So that's why they were sitting. You bet. They're not really sitting. They're not fucking sitting. They're tech. Go to shoe palace. They're right sitting now. on a technicality. Yeah. Go to shoe palace right now. They're not fucking. They're not there. Get oh yeah, probably. Hey, not by and now, our homie yeah. Jalal actually got nine pairs. What? Because he worked at a mall at the shoe palace. Right. And he got obviously the sneaks on when they finally. Wait, he got works there shipping. now, or he knew some. Or he used to work there. No, oh, Jalal well, works at the T-Mobile. Yeah. In oh, the mall. Oh, yeah, yeah. I thought you were saying he worked at Shoe no, Palace. No, like, so when did he get a part time so at Shoe Palace? No, so he was checking in with Shoe Palace there gotcha. and got the sneaks and was able to get nine pairs. Did he get me a pair of ten? No, he didn't. Why the fuck would he get nine pairs? They don't even have any value. I well the little the, bucks? The, the, the smaller sizes did. Oh, the little sizes, Dude, yeah. The little sizes he Close was trying to cash to three, in on those huh? because those were going up to three thirty, three right. fifty. That's what makes it even crazier that that kid wouldn't sell me the twelve he had. I know. The twelves ain't worth shit. The big size ain't worth nothing. If it was a six and a half, yeah. If it was an eight right now. Fuck. Two twenty, two fifteen, minus your fees, whatnot. It's not even worth it. No, hell no. Not, not in my side. Yeah, that makes it even crazier. Uh, let's see. Next comment. Bring Teddy back. I already addressed that. Great podcast. Well done, fellas. Thank you. Uh, TTF, I think you're spot on with Hugh Jackson. I don't think he really knew what was going on with Randall after the Baker game. I personally don't care that he went to the Bengals since he was since he came from there. However, I do see that the players... Hold on, let me read more. Um, however, I can see how the players would be fired up to play against him and took it personally by going to a division rival midseason Absolutely. while still getting paid by the Browns. But hey, whatever gets the Browns to play well. Obviously, uh, it's from Mark there. Sounds like he's a Browns fan. Sounds like he's a Browns guy. I actually have a couple sound bites. Uh, this leads in perfectly um, from the from Baker Mayfield. Did you hear any of his sound oh, talking yeah. about the Hugh Jackson thing when they criticized him? So if you guys didn't hear this, I'll play a, a couple sound bites here. Here's the first one. This is Baker Mayfield talking about his remarks or his um, not even remarks. His re- I guess it was remarks in the post game press conference, but the handshake and the or the lack thereof of a handshake and a hub, it turned into kind of just a weird head pat. Did you see that? I did. They kind of like shook yep. hands and then you kind of yeah. like patted oh, yeah. Baker on the head in a weird way. It was weird as fuck. But uh, Baker had some things to say about it, um, calling Hugh Jackson fake. After the game, notably, that was probably one of the most things, calling him fake for going into a division rival and some of the things he said within the interview. So uh, here's the sound from Baker Mayfield. No. Um, you know, people took it as me personally attacking Hugh. That's, that's not it. It's the fact that I get to have my own opinion on how it transpired, and he gets to do what he wants. That's how it is. Although I'm an athlete, I'm not a cookie-cutter quarter, quarter, cookie cutter quarterback. Never have been, never will be. Um, I speak my mind. That's just how I am. So I didn't like the move, and people don't have to care. I mean, I'm not looking for anybody's approval. Uh, I don't regret any of it. You know, it's about this team and what we have, and we have to stick together and play together. Ooh, what do you think of that, bud? I love it. I mean, he's, 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 he addresses it. He's calm, cool, collective, and uh, he's moving forward. The, that's it. <laughs> let, me, uh, let me hit you with one more soundbite here from Baker. People get maturity confused with me being 100% comfortable in my own skin. So... That's absolutely how I am. Uh, I've always been that way. It's not immature. It's me being exactly who I am every day, being that same guy for our team, and I think that's very important for us right now. So Baker Mayfield, here, here's where I come out on this, man. I, I like what Baker said. I think Baker is, is right on some of the points. But here's where I would disagree with Baker. And this, I don't, I don't know if it comes down to maturity or anything like that. I think it just comes down to, like he said, he's going he's gonna to be who he's going to be. He's going to have his own opin- opinion. He doesn't care what people think about it. Uh, but here's where I would say. Here's where I would say he gets a little mixed up. You can't say that it's not personal after you called the guy fake. Yeah. You can't do it. You man. made it personal. You made it personal by doing that. So now when someone comes in and people want to ask you questions about it, you can't say it's not personal personal when you already did that you called the guy fake and then they ask him to elaborate on it later on in the uh interview and he says it's a bunch of stuff i'm not going to get into um i'm not going to get into any of it 
any of the specifics that was in the building, blah, 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 blah. So if you're going to call the guy fake, but then not give us context and give us reasoning why, you probably shouldn't call the guy fake to start with. You should probably just say, hey, I'm done with it. I'm not going to talk about it. That's the first point. Number two, this is on Wednesday. We're talking about this on Wednesday. You should be well past this. This game yeah. happened on Sunday. You should be standing there saying, hey, guys, I don't have anything more on Hugh. Kind of told you how I felt about it earlier in the week. Right. That's it. Let's move along. Or after the game, I mean, let's let's move along. That's all you had to say. Yeah. You don't need to go into all this other stuff and go into this, oh, it's my opinion, and it's, you guys don't I have to agree. And I don't, you don't have to do any of that. You don't have to do any of that. But by calling him fake, you opened up Pandora's box for the media to challenge you yeah. and say, well, why, why do you say that? Yeah. And now you want to say, well, it was something in-house, and I don't want to really talk about you it. You created you can't do this that. story. You, you made this that, happen. Baker. What do you fucking expect the media to do, dog? Right. So I like Baker as much as I like some of the stuff Baker said. I do disagree with some of it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of where I come out on there. But I do think the Browns are good, and I think that's the um, – Toughest game the Broncos have left to play. And I'm, yeah. I'm a little bit nervous about it, to be honest with you. And the only reason I say it's not the Chargers is because the Chargers are in week 17 and they may have their spot in the AFC wrapped up by that time. We don't yeah. know what's going to happen for sure. But I'm thinking they may be sitting some players at that yeah. time um, if they continue. Who knows? I mean, they got a big – or they lost against the Broncos, but they bounced back with a big win last week. Mm -hmm. It's against Arizona, so not great. They have a tough game Monday night against the Steelers this week. Or is it Sunday night? It's a Sunday night uh, or a night. Monday night or Sunday night, dude. Prime time game, Chargers Steelers. I'm ready for that one. Yep. I say I'm ready. I don't even know what the fuck night it is. Anyways, uh, moving along. Let's see. Oh, here we go, Thomas. Uh, this is the guy. I think he said something about. Hold up. Let me let me read it. For, oh, he, he talked about the whiny the whiny bitch shit. Uh, Thomas, first off, I'm a big fan. Only calling you whiny because that's the sneaker game and the fuckery that goes on. P.S. I'm allowed to write curses in the comments section with a question mark because that's remember he said he said i'm being a whiny bitch but then he used pound signs oh, yeah, and yeah. shit to uh to spell out bitch sure and then he just said fuckery with the same kind of thing f-u-c pound sign e-r-y mm -hmm. but yeah no uh you could do whatever you want bro i'm not gonna flag you i don't think any of the fools in here are gonna flag you you could you could cuss you could do whatever you want bro uh no i know i know i really i i I got from your sentiment that you're a fan. I didn't think you were coming uh, out hating, but I just wanted to make sure we were clear on that. If in case you were, because I don't know the tone, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. It's hard to it's hard to tell tone there. So I'm trying to give you some context and make sure people understand where I'm coming from. Yes, it's the sneaker game. Yes, that's the fuckery that goes on. But I'm here to do a talk show. I'm here to you know what I mean. I'm here to tell it, a story and give my opinion on how the story went down. And that doesn't make it okay, right? You know, that doesn't make that doesn't make what it, they did. yeah I because totally it is agree. the fucking shoe game. Okay, so it makes it fucking okay, and we're just gonna fucking breeze over it get out of here yep um so here you go this is the point or the comment you alluded to earlier you need to separate the podcast and the shoe review like i said i would love to do it man i just time is my enemy i'm uh i'm working i'm doing as much as i can someone commented on that and said and vlogs from sneaker reviews and tutorials so someone else commented they want a full revamping nice. they, you got man they, when was the last time we did a fucking tutorial right i think this i don't know maybe Living someone's it. new um let's see and then Jay Nasty replied, it's the reason they started the podcast. Sneakers, fantasy, current events, it's what they do. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's uh, it. kind of just, yeah, it's everything we do in one. But, um, I mean, it's kind of, if you notice, if you've been involved in any sneaker YouTube, if you follow any sneaker, sneaker YouTube's dying. Sneaker YouTube's changing. Mm -hmm. Everyone else is starting podcasts too. Your favorite sneaker reviewers are starting podcasts now. Everyone's jumping on this wave. This is the way people are going. Do I think they're going to be good? I don't know. So, I know I come from a radio background, so I know what I bring to this shit. I know what I'm doing when I started a podcast. I know the podcast is going to get better as we go, and I know we're going to continue to grow, but I didn't think it would be hot garbage or be dog shit right out the gate. I knew there'd be opportunities, yeah. and I knew it'd be opportunities for us to grow, opportunities for us to learn and uh, get better, but I did no way think it was going to be shit out the gate. As far as these other guys, I have no idea what their background is in radio. I have no idea if they've ever done a podcast. Other than talking in front of a camera, I don't know if they've sat down in front of a mic and interviewed someone. I've interviewed professional athletes. I've interviewed people in pop culture. I've done a lot of stuff in radio, so I come from that background. It was natural for me to move from YouTube into a podcast setting. Right. Um, not to say I still won't do sneaker reviews or I still won't do any of that. Uh, I still want to do that. It just comes down to time. Mm -hmm. And right now, holiday season, podcast, and work. Tough. And girlfriend. Tough. And family life. Oof. Oh, bro. And the Fab Five Michigan shorts that I'm rocking right now. Dude. I'm just playing. That wasn't and hard. the homemade I mac and cheese. No and the caramelized <laughs> apples, dog. 
<laughs> right, exactly. I'm baking homemade mac and cheese for Marjorie. Oh, man, I'm making fried apples for my niece. So, or, uh, mac and cheese so I don't get roasted by my niece. I'm just trying to keep my head above water, like Dal said yeah. earlier this year. Um, all right. The Supply 350 is written kind of cursive that fades down. It's not written the same as the normal 350s. So I had a lot of people hit me up on that. We talked about yeah. the ski jump on the Sesame's, yeah. everything there. So that's kind of in response to that. Um, the lack of respect you two show the doofus in the back when he's talking about his Thanksgiving. <laughs> dot, 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 dot. Ha, ha, I do the same. That's really funny. Yeah. Uh, I don't think you're a doofus, though, yeah. JJ. I've never called you a doofus. I've never called you a douchebag. I've never called you... I don't think I've inter- ever really any called you any names because I respect you. I think you're a great guy. Do I think there's some improvements from time to time? Do I think you shit the bed from time to time? Do I think you're a little dyslexic in all three phases, reading, writing, and speaking? Yeah, I do. And I, get, and I roast you on that every day. But it doesn't mean I hate you. I never call you names. I never fucking shit on you uh, in a personal matter. It's always yeah. business, right? Yeah, for right. sure. Right. Right. And uh, we always thank him afterwards as well. You know, right. hey, man, thanks for you know what you do. We appreciate you, man. Exactly. On Thanksgiving, I sent you a nice text. Hey, man, thank you for what you do. I sent you a yep. nice text. Hey, thank you for what you fucking do. But if you come and, into uh, the podcast with a fucking shrinkled shirt. Right. If you come on here with some bullshit, whether on. it's a bullshit opinion, whether it's bad fucking yeah. looking bad, bad gear, whatever. Like, it's just what it is. Yeah. We're going to roast each other. I would expect the same. French has called me out a couple times. Man. I mean, if I Dude, came in here in Adidas bad. socks with my fucking Jordan yeah. fit, I could I could see yeah. you guys roasting me. Would I give a fuck? Probably not, but I could see myself getting yeah. roasted. That's it. That's all we're franchise. saying. Oh, dude, this is bad. This is just really bad. <laughs> oh, so I'm Robin now? Yeah. You, me and Robin. That's are what I heard last time you said it. You're like, this is bad. Dude, guys, this is really bad. bad. This is so bad. bad. Dallas, this is bad. Bad. <laughs> I love that. Uh, let's see. Here we go. This one's from David. I'm glad you guys touched on the sizing issue because that shit's nuts, bro. I have a size 11 and a half in the creams uh, and in the sesame is a size 12 in the beluga 2.0s and zebras also size 12 and they're just so much more comfortable. I wear a size 11 in all of my ultra boosts, but the sizing drive me nut drives me nuts. I only buy legit authentic shoes and Yeezys aren't really something I want to return. So he's talking about the sizing we talked about. Dude, I will tell Brutal. you right now, I will use this opportunity to tell you fuckers if you are buying Yeezys, Oh my God, there, there. For one, there's a break-in period, like yep. you wouldn't believe. Yeah. It, and actually, I say like you wouldn't believe because I'm talking from Adidas. We, we're not used to having a break-in. Adidas Ultra Boosts are good to go right. out of the box. NMDs, Ultra Boosts out of the box. Most Adidas sneakers, you throw them on, they're good. Unless yeah. you got the Packer EQTs, like Dow blister joints, or you got Yeezys, they don't require much break-in. So when you do get a new pair of Yeezys, for me personally, yesterday was the first day I wore those Sesame's all day. Wore them here at the shop. We worked, what, eight, ten-hour hey, day over here yeah. probably? I'm going to sure. add to this. I did too yesterday. You wore your sessies? Go, You go first. Why did I say sessies? That was, <laughs> oh, that was fucking... Sessies? That was terrible. Dude. Why did I say... Wow, that was bad. Uh, um, that, was, that was really sessies. bad. That was, <laughs> really, oh, that, that was bad. That was really bad. <laughs> Dow, that was so bad. Bad. Uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, I wore the sesames. Sessies. Oh God, Sessies. that's so funny. Oh, yeah. I just shortened it up. Uh, I wore the sesames yesterday, as did you. Dude, I got home last night. And like I said, I spent about an eight to 10 hour day in them. This is a size 13, a full size up from my normal size 12. All my other Yeezys are size 12. I rock them all without the insole. I go with these insole all day, rocking them around the shop. Toes are sore by the end of the day, bro. I'm laying in my bed last night, getting ready to go to bed. And I'm feeling it, dude. I'm feeling like, I'm like, man, my toenails. It just feels like I was pushing down on my toenails all day day long. Did you feel the same way? I know the feeling. And no, you went half going. size up, right? Just keep going. Just okay. keep going. Finish your story. All right. So, so yeah, that's 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 really yeah. it. I, I just noticed how uncomfortable yeah. they were, and I do have two wooden shoe trees. I'm gonna pop in a wooden shoe tree today when I get home, yeah. and I'm gonna just let them yep. bitches stretch for a few weeks to maybe a month. I might not rock them again, and I'm gonna do the same with my new pair of zebras, which are also a 13. Yep. And uh, I ex- I just didn't expect it. If I went a whole size up, I didn't expect my. T- I had that soreness in my toes from the 12s. I didn't expect it out of the 13s. Dog, I have a whole different story. Oh shit! Really? Oh, Whole different story. Different. Okay. Okay. So I wore the Sessies all day. <laughs> Sessies. <laughs> That's bad. The Sessies. Uh, the Sessies. So I wore the Sessies. Oh my all... god! We're at two hours right now. Oh fuck! All right. You better uh, hust. So I Damn. wore I wore the fucking Sessies all day yesterday. Okay. Fucking at work half day. The other half day at a meeting. Okay. So I was sitting down, moving around. Yeah. Up and down. Up and down. Um. So pretty good. Pretty good day of wear, right? Before I wore them, I actually had my wooden shoe tree. So I've had the the wooden shoe tree in my sesames in the in the box 
for the last four or five days. Haven't worn them. Took the insoles out because that's how I, I go half size up and I take the insole out. So I had the insoles out, wood shoe trees in. I wore those bitches yesterday. I actually had a great experience. Really? But I didn't have the insole in. I had the wooden shoe trees preemptively in there for the last four to five days. The motherfuckers were almost falling off my feet as I was walking. What? Yeah. Wait, so you put wooden shoe trees in for four or five days and they're a half size up? And had the insole out and half size up. Dude, they weren't like falling off my shoes. You know how you have like the heels where they're kind of fucking nipping your heels where they're almost to fall off every day or or all day? Why didn't you put the insole back in? Yeah. I'm going to. Oh, but I couldn't already, because I was gone. at work. And then when I got home, you didn't finally, feel that when you put the shoe on before you left the house, or you didn't feel that walking around the house or out in the front yard. Or whatever no, because I went right to the car and, or right from the room to the car. It was your car in the garage too, huh? Yeah, so you're already did, taking a ton of steps. Didn't I mean, take a lot of steps, yeah. right? Didn't go up or down any steps like you. So mine feels pretty good, actually. Interesting. Um, so I would I would advise people to put their shoe trees in. Um, you got to get the wooden ones, too. Yeah, you, gotta you get have to. Stiff because they're hard. Joints, they're, they're not yeah. the Ikea ones. Nothing no. against Ikea, no. but that, that isn't going to no, do No, I have it. some of those. I have yeah. some of those. Dude, they're like a dollar a yeah. pair, bro. They're you so gave cheap. Me a, you oh, gave me a pair. Real? Yeah, and they're yeah. fine for like just a basic shoe. Yeah. If you just, I use them actually. Just to I have keep a pair its of, body um, and structure. Those Jordan Crimsons. They were getting a little creasing in the toe. I put the Ikea one in there just to flatten it out. It works great. Keep the body. Keep the structure. If you need more stiffness, you got to go with the wood joint but my advice is uh you know to you obviously you're gonna do yeah. it uh and maybe also take out the insole um but my advice is take out the insole put the shoe tree in and then decide to put the insole back in give it a little feel because mine dude they didn't even touch my toes like no pressure on my toes at all yesterday they almost felt a little big for me so i am going to put the insole in i'm going to kind of test drive that for a day and kind of see where that middle point is uh because right now with the shoe trees in there that long the wooden shoe trees um and wearing them all day they almost felt a little big for me. So you noticed that after five days only? What do you mean five days? You, you only had, had the shoe trees in five days? Yeah. yeah, that's it. So I don't need to leave them in a month. Well, that brings me to my next point. Yeah. What would a month do? <laughs> I right. feel like some of the Yeezys run a little different. These mm. new ones all kind of run the same. However, I feel like the Zebras run a little bit bigger. And now with this experiment I did with the Sesames, I feel like the Sesames right, might run the way the Zebras do. I disagree. I just can't agree with yeah. you when I have a si- a shoe that's a whole size up and without shoe treeing at all, my toes are killing me at the end of the day. Yeah. I, I just can't agree. I don't. I feel like they run the exact same. I feel like they run tight as a motherfucker in the toe. Um, and unless you've done the wooden shoe tree, you're, you're tight. Your yeah. toes are hurting. Sure. There's going to be a break-in period. And if you never do, do the shoe tree, you may have to rock them for God, you may three, have four, to, five times I would say before more. they loosen up in I the toe. I would say five to six times. Well, I'm, I'm talking about how I rocked them in an eight yeah. to ten hour period. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, if you yeah, rock them sure. three, four, five times in an eight to ten hour day, work day, whatever, yeah. they may loosen up a little bit quicker. But I'm going to go with the shoe tree route. Yeah. I don't want the... My toenails were sore, Let dude. me know how it is. But yeah, my Beluga 2.0s, my Blue Tints, all of those, man, that are going a half up. Dude, I, I feel the same way you do. But these Sesames gave me a different experience based off the experiment I did. That's what I leave Gotcha. With. I think we're going to... Uh, I want to get through these last few YouTube comments and then uh, we'll get into heaters. So we'll probably skip Stardom Sit'em this week. Okay. Um, even though I know it's a big fantasy week for you guys. Uh, fantasy playoffs are coming. So, But uh, yeah, I'll get into... We'll get into that in a minute. Um, Let's see. The red 11. So he's talking about the red Jordan 11s that came out last Christmas would look so much better if they had the white jump man on them. Um, I don't mind the all redded out. I don't, That'd I wouldn't hate dope, on the white though. jump man, but, uh, I, yeah, actually now that I'm thinking about it in my mind, I'm such a visual person. I have to see it, but now I'm thinking about, it, I, I, I could probably agree with that. It would be perfect for Christmas and with the white. W- yeah. yeah. I think it's still fine with the all red too though. Or is it all red or is it black on there? I think it's red. I don't know. I don't know. You don't own that pair, right? Um, The the funny thing, funny story about this pair, actually. The other night when I'm at the Nuggets game, um, I go, we're going down to our seats. The gentleman right before the row before me, because I'm looking down to see what rows they are. You know, you go down 18, 17, 16. I'm looking at the rows. I'm looking down. I look at the row to make sure I'm in the right row. The gentleman behind me has a pair of these red Jordan 11s on with the fucking stock X tag hanging off the shoe. I could not believe it. I thought this was a joke. Yeah. I'd been seeing this shit on Twitter. I thought fools were fucking around. He had the green stock X tag hanging off the shoe. What, what are we doing? 
Is that a real thing? I know you're How's, up on the vlogs. You're up on... I saw Teddy fucking trolling some fools. Is this real? I literally saw something... Uh, Someone asking the question, how many dongles can you have on your fucking shoe? Dallas, fill me in. You're up on the vlogs. You're fucking following all this bullshit. You're, you have nothing but time. Yep. What's uh, I don't on? have nothing but time, but yeah, I am, I am, a, little <laughs> up on the, I am a little up on the vlogs. So yeah, Teddy- What uh, is the deal with the StockX tags so, and people rocking on the shoe? Why the fuck would you ever do that? It looks insane. Yeah, so Teddy's been trolling a lot of people. Uh, Fomer Simpson actually kept his StockX tag on his Concords. Um, so there is some trolling happening and some weird stuff Why going up. Why do you get Concords from StockX? Huh? Why do you get Concords from StockX? Because Fomer has a partnership with StockX. Doesn't he have a partnership with Kixar for us and he always gets his shoe from there? Partners, partnerships, partnerships. Is this new partnership? Uh, well, he does giveaways with StockX. So oh, they he have does? that part okay. partnership. So then right. Kixar for us helps him out. Gotcha. So yeah, I think there's some trolling going on, but I think there are some legitimate people out there thinking that that's swag to do and oh i think it all God. starts with off-white you fucking yeah. so there are off some white people tag, man. there off-white are... tag and stock x tag are completely, completely different. different don't yeah. even bring that yeah. don't even bring that bullshit to my but, table don't be bouncing that shit in my but court. that's where the similarities are that shit that, on my turntables that, that's where <laughs> on my ones and twos <laughs> but that's where people are uh you know coming with this to make this okay but then you have big shoe tubers like teddy like foamer that are kind of stating that this is okay as they're well fucking around. so there's this middleman but yes they are fucking around they're trolling the shit out of it but people are legitimately doing it People are so stupid, Dallas. I fucking hate that stock X tag. Like, that's, Dude. I, that's the first thing I want to take off. I totally agree. I, I think the thing, thing on looks there. terrible. I think it's great. It's oh, a great service they let provide. Me, great. Let me even talk about the off-white tag. Fuck those things, too, because every time I wear my Prestos, if I don't have it put on the correct lace, the motherfucker drags, yep. and I, every time that I walk, it, it bounces back and yep. hits me in the foot. It annoys the shit out of me. Yep. So you know what? I don't even wear those. Yeah, you take the off-white Fashion off. hurts, my dude. <laughs> Fucking fashion, man. Whatever. That's You know what? I love the shoe. Like my pr- off-white Presto, the black pair. That's my favorite shoe that I have ever owned. Wow, favorite shoe in your collection, huh? But I do not have that fucking stupid stock, uh, tag. Yeah, the off white tag. I can't wear it. I can't believe Did off white tag, off whatever. Or, uh, yeah, I just take it off. Tag, I mean, I keep I it because it's a piece of that. I'm um, that collector. Shoe, yeah. But I just fucking put it right back in the box with the extra set of laces. Good to go. Uh, Fuck that. Next one here. StockX sent me back my Supreme hoodie. Or sent me back a Supreme hoodie that I bought last season saying that I had signs of wear. It had a stain on the sleeve cuff, and I only took it out of the plastic to take pics and sell it, let alone wore it. So it sounds like uh, – I think that's pretty – I think that's happened with – you got that happen with shoes where you uh, you sent shoes into Goat or StockX, and they said that they had looked like they were worn yeah. and they weren't, right? Yep. I think that's kind of happened to everyone, man, whether it's One pair uh, streetwear or shoes. Um, I just think it's – um, it's unfortunate, but it's just part of the game, man. Um, when they get it, it's all at their discretion. You know what I mean? We're using their service. It may not be right. You may not agree. And uh, plus, it just kind of is what it is. As long as it's not happening a bunch of times or, like you said, it happened one time, honest mistakes happen. It kind of just is what it is. Did you hit him up too? Did you hit him up and be like, yo, what yeah, the hell? I just I just sent him an email and they were like, well, sorry, we can't take the shoes and here's free shipping. So oh, that's I cool. got free shipping out of it, but nice. well, and I got my shoes back and they were in the condition that I remember them being in. So I didn't see them any more fucked up less or whatever. What were you going to say? They just go through so many shoes and sometimes right. they see the same shoe over and over again. So I have a feeling there's like a level of pristine that has to hit every time. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, streetwear and uh, shoes could vary a little bit, but I've definitely seen that happen to a few different people. Um, It's not an isolated incident. And last one here to kind of finish up, one of the best podcasts on the planet, Can't Wait Every Week. He also said no stuffing when we were talking about the Thanksgiving uh, Mm -hmm. stuff. I'm not a stuffing guy, dude. Bread, uh, it's just bread that's like... It's weird. Mo- uh, mushy and it's just too. Uh, I'm I'm bad with. Uh, yeah. I'm a kind of guy that I toast peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Like I don't just I don't eat it. I don't eat. I toast the bread and then I make the PB and J. I don't fuck with lightly toasted. I don't fuck with uh, just regular bread. I don't like the. I don't like it getting in my teeth. Like same thing with uh, deli sandwiches. If they're on a roll, I'm cool. If they're on some kind of hoagie, I'm good. If it's on regular bread. Very rarely will I be eating a sandwich on regular bread. I just don't like bread when it gets wet, when it gets soggy, when it gets that jailhouse shit and stuffing just reminds me too much of that. We had this talk the other day. I told you I'm a texture guy. Yeah. As a young kid, it took me a minute to get over cottage cheese because of the texture. I'm just uh, I'm a texture guy. I don't fuck with stuffing. Are you? What do you, what do you guys feel? Actually, that's kind of crazy because at first I didn't like stuffing and everything. And as I you grew look up, like a motherfucker that would love stuffing. I see as, some of the stuff you eat in here. How the crazy you're eating it, stuff all over your mouth. You look like <laughs> a you look like the grubby stuffing king, fool. Uh, or tell me you okay, love stuffing. Per, tell at, me I'm right right now. Yes, I, I knew it. 
<laughs> I fucking knew it. I, there, there's no way I knew you were going to come on here and be it. like, I yeah, you right. hate it. Yeah, right. You either <laughs> love it or hate it. There's no in between. What do you mean you don't love it? Do you eat it uh, anytime but Thanksgiving? No. Well, then you love it. Okay. That's it. I love it. I'm just kidding. That makes no sense. I was <laughs> just trying to. I was just trying to get you <laughs> with a fake blast there, Dallas. I don't love stuffing. You hate it? Too? Sorry, man. I'm trying to buy the 1.0 OGs. Oh, you're trying well, to get them right now? Oh, yeah. Really? I'm trying mm-hmm. to get them right now. So, uh, no, I don't like stuffing. Stuffing's not for me, man. There, there are, there are stuffings out there that I've had that taste better, that are better, that are seasoned differently. But is that a staple for me? Absolutely not. Green bean casserole, like I said, and mac and cheese. If and mashed stuffing potatoes. was toasted, would you eat it? Like fucking croutons. Um, see, that's the that's the thing. I do love croutons. Do I you? love croutons, I don't like croutons on my salad. I take really? the bitches out my yep. salad every time. Love croutons for real. Yeah, yep. even Texas Roadhouse, who arguably makes one of the best salads out there. Why don't you uh, just order it without them? Because Rob, because Robin, because <laughs> Robin usually eats them. Damn, so you got to dig through the whole salad and like pull all of them. There's out? like fucking six croutons in oh, your salad. Oh, where do you go to get salads? I get Texas I get Roadhouse. I tell them extras. Get oh, extras on that band. No. <laughs> I don't know what fucking extras that is. Who ordered extra croutons? <laughs> I'm just being so dude, outlandish okay, right okay, now. I literally <laughs> ate those shits from a bag. Yeah, dude, I, I, I love little. croutons. I love croutons, especially oh. on a salad. And that's the weird thing about croutons is uh, croutons do get a little, I mean, if they're sitting there for a minute, they do kind of get not necessarily soggy, yeah. but they don't have as much crunch to them yeah. when they initially start. To but be it's honest, still different it's sometimes than nice because some of them are just so hard. It's it's so hard to go from just like a salad that's just very they can't be too hard though. They start cutting up your mouth. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it's a it's a it's a uh, fine line with croutons. They can't be too old or too you know sit around too long. Or if they're too yeah. hard, if they're just a certain brand that's just too crunchy, can't yeah, fuck with it. Any sure. luck on those shoes, Dallas? Uh, I'm going through checkout now. Oh, are you really? Yeah. Wow. Oh, shit. All right, so yeah, we're gonna I'll skip. Send you, I'll um, send you the link if you're if you're in. Yeah, fuck yeah, man. What do you mean? If, Actually, if you're in, what do you think? Uh, pff, stupid, dude. Because oh a shipping is only four ninety five. That's oh, the best you can do. So you got one eighty at retail, oh, yeah. four ninety five. Will they go below retail? Possibly, but I think the OGs because the creams haven't really gone. I've seen them as low as one seventy here recently. But you're gonna spend a fuck ton hmm. on shipping for stock X. Four dollars ninety five cents right here. So one eighty four ninety five is your total. So What's they finish the, uh, this up. Yeah, yeah. Shoot me the link when I'll you're shoot done. Shoot the link real quick. I'll try to get it cracking. Um, all right, so let's move into. Keep, keep I think running this podcast. Yeah, I think for we're me. gonna skip. Uh, that wraps up the YouTube comments. Um, as always, man. Yeah, if you guys want to get involved in the convo, uh, you guys won't see me replying to a bunch in there because I reply to them on the show. Um, I'll reply to a couple of the little fucks that I think are just coming in here talking shit that ain't really fucking with us. They ain't Correct. part of our group. But uh, other than that, I mean, I won't really reply. I'll just be a smart ass to some people. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for uh, commenting and thank you for asking questions. I appreciate your guys' uh, comments and opinions as always. Thank you, Dallas18495. Who are they coming from? Uh, West NYC. Jeez, you're going so. deep on that one. No, it's In not that bad. I've ordered, this Damn, is where I son. actually got my PODs from. Oh, really? My little pods. I haven't even yeah. heard of that site. Yeah, West dope. NYC? Yeah, man. I'm going to send you the link real quick. All right, cool. You're going to get linked up. So we're not going to do, uh, just because we're running long today, man, we're not going to do Stardom Sidem. I think um, we can skip that. It is a big, big fantasy weekend for a lot of you guys. You're, uh, this is the last weekend before your fantasy playoffs start. So good luck to everybody out there in your fantasy leagues. I'm in six. Dallas is in six. I think the way it's looking, I'm about to make the uh, playoffs in four of the six. What are you looking like? Uh, four of the six as well. Same. Same yep. situation. Same. Okay. So we're looking about the same. Uh, big weekend for us. Unless your league, for if, if your league does not start playoffs next week, Week, uh, what is this? Are we in week 13? This is 13, 13 here. So if, you're, if your league does not do the playoffs in 14, 15, 16 and, the, and uh, ends the season there, if they start it in 15, 16 and then they play the championship in 17, you've got to talk to your commissioner. If you are the commissioner, you got to quit being the commissioner. <laughs> Correct. That is, you know, you don't, want to, you don't want to be having your fantasy football playoffs in, or a championship in week 17 when a lot of teams are sitting their guys it for the playoffs. No you want to end sense. it in week 16, man. I don't know. I feel like at this time and how long fantasy has been around, this is rookie shit, like this is rookie advice. Um, but if you guys are not starting your playoffs in 14, 15, and then championship in 16, 
uh, you're missing the boat there. Correct. I've seen people even start it a week earlier. I, I, I know people starting playoffs this week, and they end them in 15 just to be – Really? Yeah, super safe. I've seen that before. Not super common, but I've seen it. None gotcha. of my leagues are like that. They all end in week 16. I would say better earlier than late. Yeah. Late makes no fucking no sense. Doubt. No. no doubt. No doubt. Yeah, you could just get – it's just uh, what are you playing all year for? Right. You know what I mean? You're playing all year, and then you got some of your best players chilling on the bench, or uh, they're not really playing to win. It's it's too much. It's too much um, – to mess with, so I don't want to deal with that. But we will get into uh, heaters here, kind of jump into those. Again, good luck to everyone in their fantasy leagues this week. Make sure you guys join the DraftKings League that we got cracking off. Um, oh, before we jump into this, did you hear the <laughs> did you hear Von Miller, uh, the Von Miller sound from earlier this week? They were talking to him about, um, they were just trying to ask him about the game, how it went. And uh, I think this is either, I think this is Monday's presser. Hmm. It was either after the game or it was on Monday. Uh, but check out this, check out Von Miller here. Uh, talking to the media. Could you describe your emotions, thoughts on uh, how you guys have been able to turn it around this season when it uh, looked a little bleak at the bye and back-to-back wins against the Chargers and Steelers? Uh, it was a great team win um, on the Cincinnati. On how were you guys able to force for four turnovers, and what did that mean in uh, being the difference today? Oh, we played great defense. Uh, we played great offense, great team win. It's uh, on the Cincinnati. Are you channeling Bill Belichick? We had a great win today. Great team win. Um, Shelby had an incredible day, but it's on the Cincinnati. You mentioned Shelby had an incredible day. He's had a pretty full week as well. Do you think that this game meant a little bit extra to him? Yeah, I, I guess. Yeah, he had a, he had a kid on on Friday, but you know, now it's on the Cincinnati. There you go, Von Miller. Mm, he even asked him, are you channeling your inner Bill Belichick? Uh, if you guys remember that press conference from Bill Belichick a few right. years ago, where it was like, oh, we're on to Cincinnati. Every, yeah. On to Cincinnati. Every question, on yeah. to Cincinnati. I think Frank Caliendo did like a little uh, spin about a spin off on it on Fox, like joked around with it. Um, I thought it was funny. I, I know a lot. Von kind of got some shade on Twitter. Like People are like, what is he doing? Just answer the questions. That's Von Miller. Mm. That's just his personality. I thought, uh, I thought, it, was, I thought it was pretty funny. Yeah. Um, what are you going to do? I mean, he could have he could have gone up there and bragged about the team, bragged about, you know, hey, we won two games in a row, which isn't shit. You're still a five-win football team at this right. point. Everyone's talking about Broncos are still alive. Favorable yeah. look schedule uh, schedule looks favorable. All this stuff. You still got to go out and win those games. I mean, you still got to go make this shit happen. This is the NFL. I realize Cincinnati's starting a backup quarterback this weekend in Jeff Driscoll. Yeah. Who the fuck is Jeff Driscoll? Don't do you know. even know Jeff Driscoll? Nope. Do you even know where he went to college? Nope. Bet he does Bet he doesn't have as nice a hair as the Red Rocket either. I don't know. I don't even know. It. I, I haven't seen Jeff Driscoll, and I know he, he played last week, but uh, I didn't see what he – I wasn't paying attention to his looks. Yeah. What I do know about him is he is the dude that came in right after uh, – so it was Tim Tebow at Florida. Then it was this kid – I feel like his name is Bradford. Why do I – his name is escaping me, but then Driscoll's the guy that came in right after him. So he Got played you. at Florida. He's got a big arm. Uh, pretty talented. I just think – I'm not super worried about him, but I'm also not discrediting him. Sure. I think the Broncos defense needs to get after him early. They need to get after him often. Don't give him any window of hope this weekend. Don't give them any chance yeah. to feel like they're in this game. Now, another um, another piece that worries me about this game on Sunday, they're in Cincinnati. We know how the Broncos fare at 11 a.m. kickoffs yeah. or Mountain Time 11 a.m. kickoffs. Not good. When they play in the early slate of games. And the jungle's hard to play in. Yep. We've talked about it. So I'm not here saying that they uh, – should they blow out the Bengals? Absolutely. Bengals have been terrible. Yeah. They're with a backup quarterback. Um, maybe A.J. Green's coming back this weekend. I don't know for sure at this time yet. Is Marvin Lewis finally gone after this season? Dude, <laughs> I don't know if that guy – that he, is the he has the longest staying power out of anybody <laughs> that shouldn't right. in the league. Have they? Has he won a playoff game since he's no. been there? That's Playoffs. insane. Playoffs. Fuck winning a playoff game. Are they even making the playoffs? Yeah. I don't know if they made the playoffs in what the past five seasons. Yeah, they're not is making the Red it this Rifle. Year. No. He, as JJ Watt said, he's looking like the Red Rider BB gun. That's okay? it. He's not looking like <laughs> the red, he's not looking like the Red oh, Rifle. Damn, I, oh. man! I just watched a Christmas story last night. That's tight. That's funny. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's go ahead and jump into um, a little segment we call heaters. All right, damn. This is my heater. I dare you to hit it. Hot shit. Hot shit. Hot shit. Hot shit. All right, so here we go with our uh, heaters here. Before we do that, you just told me, I, th- I thought you said they own, the biggest size they have is 12 and a half. Didn't you say 12 yeah. and a half? No, 12 10 and a half. half. You said 12 and a half. And, and then I looked. You said 12. We'll run the podcast back, or All you right. can just go run it back yourself. <laughs> run it back. You definitely said 12 and a half. Actually, that's not, I don't even think that was on the podcast, but I do have the audio recording here. 
Yeah. Actually, I don't, it doesn't even matter. Let's jump into. <laughs> no. I'm just talking about a bunch of shit the audience doesn't care about. It doesn't matter. <laughs> We're fucking off the rails here. Uh, so to wrap up the podcast, man. Let's get into the heaters here. Um, we're starting out with most confident of the weekend, Dallas. Where are you going with this? Do we want to start off with uh, where we sit, or do we just want to do our picks? Oh yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, let's, my bad. Let's, let's my bad. Off, let's start off with where. Thanks we're for at. keeping me straight. I'm fucking. I'm all, all good. off track here. All right, so uh, Dallas. Of course, Dallas wants to know where we're at because he's beating me for the first time this season. <laughs> so of course, he wants to uh, gloat a little bit. He's sitting at 21 and 14. Uh, nice seven games Damn. over 500. Comfortable lead there. Two game lead up on me. I'm 19, 16, and one. So he's two games up on me. And um, going for looking to continue that this weekend. Dallas, what do you want to go for your most confident? All right, for most confident, weekend? Uh, I really, really like man. I love the Colts. I love the Colts in Jacksonville. I hate you. Uh, at minus four. I got to take Indy all day. Dude, the Jags are reeling right now. The Colts are white hot. I hate you. Dude, they're smoking hot. Uh, a touchdown plus victory for Andrew Luck. Uh, and uh, the Colts seem fairly, or seem very, sorry, very likely to me. That's what I would say. Minus you took four. The, uh, you took mine. That was my most confident as well. Most uh, confident. I'm with you there. At least on we're the on Colts. the same side. Colts minus four. Andrew dude, just, Luck. Dude, which means we're going to lose this one, uh, which means the Colts probably won't even win the game, let alone cover oh, the four. Dirty. Jacksonville's going to win it with a backup quarterback this week, probably, uh, just because Dallas and I are picking them. We both have the Colts minus four, our most confident. Yeah, what's his name? Cody Kessler? Cody Kessler Cody starting Kessler this week. Cody Kessler starting, yep. Yep, starting this week over there for the Ville. Uh, oh, Vi- Fournette's out? Suspension? Yeah, Leonard Fournette's out. <laughs> with the punch, punch Everything to the Bills. Swings. This is literally set up. I don't know how yeah. the spread isn't more here, uh, probably because Vegas doesn't fully believe in the Colts. Colts, like yep. a lot of um, NFL fans do. Yeah. Colts have been getting a lot of press, a lot of praise the past couple weeks. And a lot of points. It around. Oh, they've Fuck. been they've been looking good. Cream. It's not. I don't want to say it's it's uh, not valid the praise they've been getting. Right. But people have really been on the Colts' dick. So, um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, Dallas and I, right there. We're on the minus Colts' four. dick. Yeah, <laughs> minus four. I, I didn't want to say. Give me the Colts' it. dick, I guess. You said it, not me. <laughs> <laughs> Pause. Uh, <laughs> your your second most confident of the week. What are you going Dang, with that? Let me let me write this lead, down here. Colts making minus four. me lead this charge um i gotta go back to my boys not kansas city we are not doing kansas city i don't know if you saw that spread That's it's what ins- what is it minus 15 for them yeah minus 15 get the fuck out of here That's we're insane get out of here no no none of this none of that okay this oh. week we're going saints at cowboys which i hate to do because it's a thursday night game so you guys will hear this afterwards but i am taking the saints at minus seven check my stats on that do you see seven or seven and a half because I see it in two sites. Uh, oh, you're taking tonight's game? I'm taking tonight's game. And so I, this is already five. over. We don't typically uh, like to do that, but I am taking this game. We don't like to do that, yeah. Dallas, So, but you're going to do it I'm anyway. I'm going to do it. Okay. Uh, let me double check. All right, I got seven on Yahoo. Perfect. That's what I see. Let me see what it is on... Uh, but I also see seven and a half, so... And then I see seven and a half on here. Um... Fuck it, let's do? just go with seven. Let's go with seven. Cool. Actually, I should penalize you and make you go seven and a half since you're taking a Thursday night game. No, let's not do that. Let's just go. Let's, no, let's, let's, let's just go seven. All right, okay. Let's, let's let's go straight. And your two games up on me. Let's go straight, Tutty. Okay. Um, straight, Tutty. Dude, I think. Uh, I mean, seven. Saints uh, minus seven tonight I, against the Cowboys. I don't Cowboys. even need to say anything about the Saints, man. They're the best team on both sides of the ball right now in the NFL. That's it. What are your? What's yours? Uh, I'm gonna go. <laughs> what's yours? I'm gonna go with uh, a game that, dude. I went back and forth on this game a lot, and I just kept coming out Cleveland. I got to go with the Cleveland Browns. I got Cleveland Browns plus seven. What do you got? You got them at six and a half or seven? I got I got six and a half. All right, let me look and see where I'm at here. The early line was seven, so it may have dropped. Let me see. I'm going to go with the current lines. I have seven on Yahoo. Okay. Okay, you see it there. Let me go to uh, my bookie. This is pretty important because plus guess seven. what? Holy shit. What's up? Oh, you got it too, huh? This but you're is on my, the other side. This is my least confident. Six and a half on the other side. Yeah. So, hmm. So you're taking the Texans or the Browns? I'm taking the Browns. I'm taking the Browns. Oh, you're on the Browns. Yeah. Okay. No, of course. Okay. Yeah, because I, I want my plus six and a half. Is that what we decided on? I got yeah, because I, I see six and a half on, and I see seven, but okay. we'll go we'll go six and a half. I'm I'm taking the Browns. This is my least confident, so I'll let you kind of talk about it uh, because it's your second one. Then you have to go to your third, but uh, I'm I'm with you on that. I take the Browns as well. 
Yeah, I think um, overall, I mean, it just kind of what we talked about here, I think Baker Mayfield has the leadership intangibles. I think he is a good leader. I think he does wear his heart on his sleeve. Um, I think if you look at Baker Mayfield's record since Hugh Jackson left, he was one and four under Hugh Jackson. Now two and one. And he's looked like a completely different quarterback. And it's funny that Todd Haley pushed for uh, them to change their system. He pushed for more of a college-style offense. Hugh Jackson kept pushing back against Todd Haley. If you remember in Hard Knocks, hey, I'm the coach. Mm -hmm. We do what I want. This is my team. Remember Hugh Jackson saying all that during the uh, press conference in Hard Knocks? Well, I guess um, we got a little peek into that uh, during training camp. But I guess that has that never subsided. I guess it was the same kind of mantra every week. Hey, I'm the coach. This is the way we're going to do it. It's yeah. my team. I sit in this chair. Yeah. Well, guess what? I was in your you chair don't sit once. Anywhere. Yeah. And it sucks that Todd Haley got fired with him on the way out yeah. when he was wanting the opposite of what he was wanting. You know, totally. he was wanting a different system. So it sucks that he got fired with him. But now Greg Williams has taken over. He's got the Brown. It looks like he's righted the Brown ship. Yep. This looks like this isn't the old Cleveland Browns. Uh, they're two and one under Greg Williams now. I. I um, I actually think they win this game outright. I think they stop the Houston's yeah. Houston uh, Texans win streak. That's why I'm not that mad to take it at six and a half. I would like seven, yeah. but I think they're going to win overall. Sure. I think the uh, Browns are going to upset Houston this week in a shocker and I'm get the little, win. Yeah, I'm a little nervous as well with this. That's why it's my least confident. 24-21 Browns. Dude, winners of eight straight games. Now, yep. we can argue the who they played, you know, the last eight games, but... I mean, they've got some momentum, and it's at Houston. I, I'm a little concerned, but I do, man. I'm, I'm a believer in these in these Browns and what they're doing. I think the institution, they've got it right. Baker Mayfield's leading the shit out of these guys. Um, yeah. You didn't want to go Kansas City this week, minus 15? Minus 15, nope. JJ uh, <laughs> informed me of that earlier as well, and I said, fuck you. <laughs> oh, wow, you did not like it, no. huh? No. That's interesting. There's none actually, that I take that back. I was looking at the wrong one. It's minus 16. Oh, so, uh, what, the Charger, or yeah. the Chiefs? Yeah. Oh, that I was looking at the what it came out with, so it must uh, have gone up. Yeah. People are heavy yeah, on the Chiefs. It's crazy. Yeah, so the line's me. moving uh, the Chiefs' direction. People are very, very uh, heavy on that, it looks like. Chiefs and I are not best friends this week. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go um, with my last one. Not the most confident, and I hate how big the spread is, but I just think the Niners are that bad, dude. And I'm going to take Seattle this minus 10 at against, home. Uh, yeah, not not against the San Francisco 49ers at home. What? Not LA minus 10? No. No. Nope. I'm this, going with Seattle. No, this, this is a better bet, JJ. Trust I like, us. Uh, I like Seattle this week. I like Russell Wilson. I think the Niners, they're just just—they're in shambles. You got Nick Mullins at starting quarterback. Yep. Nick Mullins going into Seattle. Have you ever have you ever watched a game in Seattle? It's oh, a yeah, tough it's place to play. Yeah. Tough place to play. So The 12th man is definitely alive there. Uh, I think San Francisco's given up on the season. They're 2-9. and nine. Yeah. They're not going anywhere. Well, Seattle is also turning into the team that you just don't want to play towards the playoff hunt. They're the in the Broncos race. position. They're Dude, one game ahead of the Broncos. They're six and five. They they need to win out here. And Seattle's always that team that you don't want to play going into this where we're at in week 13, week 14. You do not want to play Seattle. I I like this bet. This was going to be one of mine, but I I just I last minute kick out. But I love this pick. Uh, All right. So just to be clear, Dallas and I both have the Colts minus four. We agree on that one. Dallas has the Saints minus seven. And then uh, we both have the Browns plus six and a half. And then my third pick is Seattle minus 10. So we're in agreement on the Browns, in agreement on the Colts. I have Seattle minus 10. You have the Saints minus 7. And we both have the same today uh, or this week. Two uh, two favorites mm-hmm. and one dog. Yep. So in the Browns, I think it's going to be a good weekend for us. Hopefully, um, since I'm riding with you on two of the picks, yeah. like you got to at least win two of them. you got to at Bet. least go two and one. So I can at least go two and one. <laughs> yep. uh, but I'm hoping that uh, the Saints shit the bed tonight against the Cowboys. You guys already know the result there. I will be locked and loaded on that. Uh, anything more, man? We talked about a lot today. We covered a lot on the podcast. Oh, sorry we didn't have time to get to the Sardom Sidems, but good luck to everyone there. And also, uh, join the DraftKings League, man. It's a lot of fun this weekend. $5 entry, winner take all. You already know the deal. Link is in the YouTube description. Anything more, fellas? Anything else you want to wrap up on? Nope. No? We're good. All right, I guess that's it. Um, I really don't know what's going to happen for Monday's show, but uh, I'll see you fools Tuesday.